evil. They are eternal adversaries. But good and evil are more than rivals. They are, at times, close siblings sharing an indelible bond. Good and evil. Within the core of every human being is the capacity to be righteous or commit horrible atrocities. It's dark. Within the essence of each individual, good and evil coexist. Every epic encounter is comprised of two battles. The physical clash with one's enemy and the mental conflict within. Good and evil have the same face. Which one rules depends solely on the precise moment in time each crosses one's path. It's dark. Darkness abounds. It permeates our world, our existence, endangers our souls. And often, when a warrior of light attempts to extinguish the darkness, he becomes seduced by it, becoming the very thing he despises. There's nowhere to run. He becomes the hated. Nowhere to hide. For we wrestle, for we wrestle, for we against wrestle flesh, not flesh, against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in the highest realms. He becomes the hated, the darkness, the enemy itself. It's time if the good man don't come around. I'm scared. You will still be the sweetest boy in town. Wrestling presents Hard Justice. Tonight, the World Heavyweight title is at stake. Will Christian Cage neutralize Scott Steiner? Will the cancer be eliminated from TNA? Will we have a new NWA champion? It's Jeff Jarrett defending against Sting. Hard Justice, next on pay-per-view. Hard justice, I'm gonna add a match. It's gonna be you against that Johnny Divine. And all you gotta do to show how great you are, Eric, all you gotta do is win. Because I'm after people who can sell pay-per-views, who can draw ratings, and have great matches. Can you do one of those? It doesn't matter, you better. The point is, you better not lose. And his opponent, now residing in an undisclosed right. location, yeah. here's Showtime! Yeah. Speaking of undisclosed locations, so where the heck is Eric Young at? Someplace here in the impact zone. And he's like the Pied Piper leading the charge of all the fans from outside the building. Check this out. They're all yelling, don't fire Eric. And they all started coming through right here. And you can see a cameraman having to get out of the way. And look at this group all coming around the corner. And you can see him, his army. Eric Young's got him an army. They open up the guardrails. They're letting the inmates loose here. No, we're not at the asylum. We're at the impact. 
He, he, he got for it. He motivated. This is an important match for Eric Young. This is his chance. He's been worried about getting fired. Well, Jim Cornette put it on the line. Don't fire Eric. That's what it says on his T-shirt. And that's what the crowd says here at Hard Justice as well. What's the story? Johnny Devine with a microphone? Showtime. I don't know what's wrong with you. Why you're sucking up to these pasty-faced goblinoids like they can save your job. I've known you a long time. We've been teammates for a long time, and I know you always choke because you can't take the pressure. Both men, formerly in Team Canada. And just like Jim Cornette just said, If you can't get the job done... Looks like the vine's getting in Eric Young's head. You're out of here. No more TNA. And I don't care what any of these fans say. They, they can chant whatever they want. Tonight, you're getting fired. Whoa. I mean, as optimistic as Eric Young was just seconds ago after hearing from, from Johnny Devine and just how serious this matchup is. Oh, looks like Eric's a little nervous again, and then Johnny Devine right at the opening bell hooks him right in the eye. Well, it's like Eric's just so fragile. I mean, he's so paranoid, and he got himself right. built up. He had a little army there with him, and then a little speech there by Johnny Devine. Looks like it kind of cracked his confidence. Oh, look at this! <laughs> and now he's hugging his former teammate. Man, this guy is like teetering on the line of sanity and insanity, I tell you. Think, think of the pressure involved. What did Jim Cornette say? All you have to do is win. You better not lose. Can you sell pay-per-views? Can you draw ratings? Can you have a great match as you see Johnny Devine oh, repeated shot. shots in the corner? Man, just wicked shot after shot after shot. Johnny Devine's taking this very, very serious for a lot of reasons. Not just that, all of the pride of the paparazzi. I mean, this is somebody that knows if he loses to Eric Young at this point, I mean, that, what's that going to do to Jenny Devine's career? So he's taking this very serious, and Eric Young's going to have to wake up. We have endeavored, ladies and gentlemen, to speak to both champion and challenger Jeff Jarrett and Sting during this Heart Justice broadcast, but we have been denied by both men because of the high stakes, high profile nature of this world's title match. Both declined to make comments. Eric Young threw some things in. No. Yeah, they just won't, Mike. Like you said, they just, it's, they're just they just too focused on the on the contest at hand tonight. I've never seen, I don't think, either man as focused as they are right now because of so much is at stake. I mean, Jeff Jarrett's fighting for his career, as is Steve. Both of them know that this place is negative for both of them. And speaking about fighting for one's career, Eric Young finds himself in that same position. Look at these shots, the knee drops, one after the other from Johnny Devine. This is a, a man who was a team Canada mate of Eric Young, called him Showtime, referring to his nickname, Team Canada. And, and, I, and I don't believe that Eric Young can get that through his head, that he has to look at Johnny Devine differently. True. He can't look at him as a former teammate. He sees him out there, and a part of him just wants to erase him. And you can tell by the shots and the disrespect that Johnny Devine is showing Eric Young, he's not looking at him as a teammate at all. You make a great point. Ever since Jim Cornette, the public face of TNA management, forced Team Canada to disband, Eric has had a tough time getting that through his thick skull. Oh, what a move by Johnny Devine. Almost like an inverted DDT after springing off the ropes. Wow, gonna go for the cover. Here's one. Oh, very close for a pin right there. As right now, they're all trying to duck out of the way as he had a little fire up top. Wow. I don't know what's going on, but some of the pyro got something on fire. Is that the story? Yeah. You're right. Well, we're in a fog. This is live TV, ladies and gentlemen, and you're right here with us. <laughs> well, this reminds me of, of Philadelphia against the Chicago Bears. It's, I can't breathe right now as they're trying to stop this thing. Holy cow, folks. We apologize. But the pyro set something off, and poor guys in the ring, they're really lost. As we're trying to figure this out, there's still some on this side, guys. We need to have we'll figure out a way to get it on this side. Wow, matchup continues. We're blinded here oh, at the I'm... broadcast table. We're covered in smoke. And... Oh, my God. We're going to try and follow this action in the ring, if at all possible. Yeah, it's one of those situations. It's live TV. It's a live pay-per-view event. 
in the impact zone, obviously something at the top of the building because of the pyro. Now you see Johnny Devine spring back and miss Eric Young. Wow. You know, I thought I had seen an awful lot of things in all my years, nothing like this. Quick pin attempt by EY, but only a two count. Like I said, now I know how they felt calling that Chicago Bears Philadelphia Eagles football game. In the fog? Yes, as you can see right there, Johnny Devine still going at it. These guys know what to stake. They can't worry about the situation they have. Uh, it's a little bit of an Please bear with us, folks. You're right. Just when you think you've seen it all, something like this happens. Matchup continues, however, in the ring. You talk about TNA being on fire. We are literally, literally on fire. Wow. Well, this will be talked about. There's no doubt about that. As Eric Young making the comeback, and the crowd's still going crazy. That's what you got admired about the TNA fans. They're just going after it. You got a light touch there, Mike. I see that. Shot into the corner. Eric Young. He stood him up in the corner, and now EY going to go up from the middle row, able to push down the vine. Eric, high risk, wobbly from the top. Oh, he drops the elbow. He got it. Ten, One, two, two. No, it was so close. Man. So close. As you can see, Johnny Devine now is just running around. Pin attempt. Oh, Eric Young barely able to get out of that mic. Woo. Eric from outside. Slingshot in, sunset attempt. Johnny Devine trying to hold on here and not go over. Actually, he's got referee Slick Johnson holding on to him. Slick pushes him through. Eric doesn't take advantage. Devine goes for the kick, missed with the end to Geary. Eric's got him now. Gonna go, take him up into the air. Got him. There's that neck breaker pin. Got the three count. He's done it. Ladies and gentlemen, here is your winner. He keeps his job. Eric Young able to keep from getting fired. Wow, look at him going crazy. Through everything that went on down here, he was able to keep his concentration. How did he do that? I guess appropriately enough, the sign says, don't fire Eric Young. And it was the fire extinguisher whew, that put a cloud all over the impact zone here at Hard Justice, my God. Woo. You look around ringside, you see it, there it is. Everybody celebrates the win for Eric Young. He keeps his job, he gets the W. Oh. Wait a minute, what's this? Who is it? I don't know what the fuck. No way, that's Earl Hebner. He's choking Slick Johnson. He's got a belt. Earl Hebner, the fire referee, has a kick, and he's going to crack the belt. Slick Johnson security comes out here. He looks like a homeless person. I mean, look at it. I thought it was a fan. It got mad and jumped over the rail. That's what I thought that it happened. Larry Zabisco from the championship committee trying to calm him down. He cost me my job. I'm not taking a bullet alone. If I go down, you go down, and Jerry goes down with me. Whoa. Whoa. See right there, Larry Zabisco trying to calm him down. But I heard her have to say, if I go down, you're going down, and started naming names. And he talked about how referee Mark Slick Johnson cost him his job. I heard that. I mean, you know, Slick has been a suck up to Jim Cornette. I never expected to see Earl Hebner, who was canned, who was fired, come back here and attack Slick Johnson. And what's behind Larry taking him out of here? Let's try and regroup here, DW. Yeah, we lots, can. A lot to try to regroup Ooh. from right here, folks. What a lineup we have in store for you at a red hot on fire hard justice pay-per-view event. Let's take a look at what's yet to come tonight on the pay-per-view. It's gonna be falls count anywhere. It's the war machine, it's the unbeaten Samoan submission machine, and it's the alpha male. And not only that, you've got the X Division title on the line is Jay Lethal, Senshi, the Canadian destroyer, Petey Williams. All are gonna battle out. All three, but only one man comes out holding the X Division belt. What intrigue in this world tag team title matchup. NWA Golden State, the challengers, the Latin American exchange, the defending champions, the Fallen Angel, and the phenomenal one, and then there's the big one. Oh, there it is. You can see it, Sting, 
Jarrett for the title. We know Christian Cage will be in Sting's corner. Scott Steiner will be in Jeff Jarrett's corner. Will they cancel each other out? We'll find out as Sting and Jarrett go at it for everything. I think my black tuxedo just turned yeah. white during that matchup. We'll have to control. tell this story. We're not kidding. We mentioned during that first match wow. that both champion and challenger, Jeff Jarrett Sting, had refused to offer us interviews tonight at the Hard Justice pay-per-view event, but we were able to detail their arrival here at the arena earlier. Well, you can see right there, Jeff Jarrett's henchman, Scott Steiner, coming behind him. He's always got Jeff Jarrett's back. They're talking to each other, but they wouldn't talk to anybody else, Mike. They are focused on what's at hand later tonight. And Sting realized that he obviously needed a neutralizer for Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner. Scott Steiner in the corner of the champion Jeff Jarrett. And as a result, it will be Christian Cage in the corner of Sting. Big matchup yet to come. Up next, four teams vie for the number one spot, the number one contender to the tag champs. At Hard Justice, it's going to be a four-way tag team match. It's going to be America's most wanted. Six-time tag team champions of the world. It would have been seven if somebody would have hit me with a chair. We wouldn't have lost the belts in the first place if you hadn't hit me with that beer yeah. bomb. It's going to be the Naturals. I said I would take them back to their nirvana. He just smacked Tate Whoa. Steven. Whoa, he's not happy at all. It's not about wins and losses right now. It's about getting them ready. It's going to be Kazarian and Bentley. They're back together, Mike. And look at this. They work so well together. A great opportunity to show the world that they are ready. And it's going to be the James Gang. Hey, but hold on. On a more serious note. Ha! <laughs> and the winning team gets a shot at the NWA World Tag Team Championship. <laughs> Something I miss Will I regret my mistakes Let me see your face to face You got the attention If you will have to hang Who wanna quit? Who wanna quit? Who wanna quit right now? Let's leave the beer Back to the mini Wow It's got beer in it Yeah, it's got beer in it I also have 16 stitches in my head The communication problem again I cry out for something more I just get out of here And we are back live at Hard Justice, and you see they are making preparations right now to get a new mat in place of all things done as well. We had a fire here in the building during the opening matchup because of the pyro earlier tonight. Fire extinguishers come into play. Man alive, did it come into play. It was hard to see what was going on. The fans, though, never stopped. Never. Their fervor was into what it was going on with Eric Young and Johnny Devine. They are the greatest fans in the world. I got to say that right now. It was one of those things we will talk about You're from right. this day on. It's a moment that you will never, ever wow. forget in TNA's history. You know, we have this four-way matchup. It's on deck. The winning team is going to be the number one contenders to the NWA Tag Team Champions. Whoever emerges from this Hard Justice pay-per-view, be it the team of AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels or Conan's Latin American Exchange, Whoever wins this next matchup, and there are some intriguing teams in here, Don, some teams that have a chance to move all the way up to the top, but whichever team emerges tonight from Hard Justice will have to defend against the winners of this next match. And keep in mind, too, there's some teams that are going through different, different, going different directions. That's it. You've got the Naturals right now that seem to be focused under Shane Douglas. You've got America's Most Wanted that has not been on the same page now for a couple of months. You look at Maverick Madden, you look at Kazaria, two guys happy to be back together again and back together here at TNA. And then the experience of the James Gang, the dichotomy of this is going to be incredible. Whoever comes out of this will be the number one contenders for the tag title match. And that's 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 so important now with the, the tag team division right. so heavy and so thick in TNA like it is. Oh, you're right. There is so much depth in the tag team division here in TNA that Jim Cornette, 
TNA officials decided that the best way to do it is to put these four teams into one matchup. Whichever team emerges, they're going to get a title shot in the future. AMW, no question, Harrison Storm, they haven't been on the same page as of late. They've had miscommunication problems that have cost them, well, have cost them matches, and quite honestly, cost them the NWA World Tag Team titles. You've got a team in Kazarian and Maverick Matt just returning to TNA. Great success as singles competitors in the X Division, but will the fact that they're now reunited as a tag team, will that enable them to get back on top of the tag team division? And you talked about the franchise, Shane Douglas. He's got the naturals. Well, he's got them accepting nothing but the best. That's the key. He will have nothing but the best for this team. And we also have the veteran team, the James Gang. Before we get to that matchup, what we're going to do is take a look at the roller coaster ride of Sting in TNA. Since his arrival in TNA, Don, we have seen Sting, well, had to deal with just about everything from Jeff Jarrett. We've seen paparazzi productions going out to Sting's house, of all things, dealing with his family, dealing with his equipment, with his son, his daughters. I mean, it's just, it's just been ridiculous. Think about the journey that Sting's taken, Mike. Here's somebody that was so happy with his return. He was ready to, to put it all behind him. He retired. He said it would never get better than that. Jeff Jarrett wouldn't allow it. His paranoia wouldn't allow it. Made it personal. Made it personal. And now he's come back. And now, ironically, he has a shot at the World Championship. While we regroup here in the building at Hard Justice, what we are going to do is take you back. We are going to revisit this situation. What brings us to tonight at the pay-per-view? What brings us to Sting versus Jeff Jarrett for the NWA title? Roll that tape. Desire alone does not make a man great. It is action. It is accomplishment that forge an enduring legacy. Tonight, we look back at the man, the icon, the legend known as Sting and his return to TNA. A man on a mission in pursuit of destiny. At final resolution, the main event is going to be the alpha male, Monty Brown, and the king of the mountain versus Christian Cage and Sting! The love fest between Sting and Christian started from day one. But just as quickly as the light of brilliance flashed, it soon dimmed as Sting made an emotional farewell just weeks later. I gotta do this. It was a memory that I do not want to forget and I don't want it to be tainted. And so I want to take this opportunity to say goodbye. But one paranoid man wasn't convinced of Sting's sincerity. After just one glorious match, Sting retired. Jeff Jarrett, you made a fatal mistake. It was a fatal encounter the day you decided to mess with my family. But he could not live in peaceful obscurity. That is because one devious man decided to embark on a personal war with the retired legend. Oh, thing off. Turn it off! You know, Sting says that he came back to fight for his family. Well, this Sunday, I'm fighting for my career. At Destination X, a legend retired, but a man returned with vengeance on his mind. April 24th marked a new pinnacle in violence in TNA. On this night, Sting would face his biggest challenge since returning to TNA. There's no place for you to go once you go in there. Lethal lockdown, where the ceiling lowers and weapons are hung from the cage. You stepped over the line, Jeff. Lethal lockdown, six sides of steel, brutal weapons, eight men locked inside hell on Earth. Scorpion! Scorpion! It's the He's Sacrifice, May 14th, 2006. Jeff Jarrett recruits the assassin, the freak, the big bad booty daddy, Scott Steiner. Sting was faced with a decision. After a flash in the past, the choice was made. He is the undefeated Samoan what? Samisho Yo! Machine! What? The future of TNA, Samoa Joe, the legend that is Sting. Back in May, Sting found that he could trust very few members of the TNA roster. One stood tall, one fell at the end of a historic night. 
After a six-month journey, it seemed that Sting's mission would soon be realized. I got one thing on my mind, and that is performing surgery and removing the cancer here at TNA. Five men battled in the King of the Mountain match at Slammiversary, a unique battle that challenged a man's psyche, his strength, and his intestinal fortitude. One man stood tall. Only one thing was cleared when the dust settled. Jeff Jarrett was the most hated man in wrestling, and Sting's mission had failed. July 16th, Victory Road, Sting's quest to remove Jeff Jarrett from TNA. But adversity introduces a man to himself. Oh, what the hell it? is this? I thought that was one of the cameramen. Cameraman, my ass! Sting would return to the match and astound the world. Now, he has a second chance to accomplish his goal. You got your neutralizer, Scotty Steiner. I got my neutralizer, Christian Cage. The good news is, we're on level playing ground now, Jeff. Remember I said it before, that's why we play the game, and I promise you, Jeff, I'm gonna have my game face on at hard justice. All of life's battles teach us something. The eight-month culmination of Sting's quest comes to an end Sunday, and I will remain the king of the mountain. Now, after an eight-month journey that saw much hardship and success, the legend known as Sting is finally set to fulfill his destiny. For Sting, it may be showtime. For me, it's showdown. There will be no anesthesiologist for you, Jeff. You will not be able to sleep through this surgery, Jeff! I'm going to remove you, and it's going to be ugly. Desire alone does not make a man great. It is action. It is accomplishment that forge an enduring legacy. Tonight, we look back at the man, the icon, the legend known as Sting, and his return to TNA. A man on a mission in pursuit of destiny. At final resolution, the main event is going to be the alpha male, Monty Brown, and the king of the mountain versus Christian Cage and Sting. Sunday, and I will remain the king of the mountain. Now, after an eight-month journey that saw much hardship and success, the legend known as Sting is finally set to fulfill his destiny. For Sting, it may be showtime. For me, it's showdown. There will be no anesthesiologist for you, Jeff. You will not be able to sleep through this surgery, Jeff! I'm going to remove you, and it's going to be ugly! Ladies and gentlemen, this is the essence of live TV. We are outside the impact zone, Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida. It's Mike Tanay and Jeremy Borash on the scene to report to you what's going down here at Hard Justice. JB, you can see we've got one fire truck here. We've got several more down about at the opposite end, like about that. a half a dozen at the opposite end. The fire marshal has evacuated everyone from the building. What they're doing, from what I understand, is a test to make sure that it's safe for everyone to go back inside the arena and continue the Hard Justice event. The minute that we receive the news that Hard Justice is ready to resume, we will take it right back inside the building. This all went down during the opening match on the pay-per-view. Eric Young and Johnny Devine, apparently pyro that was set off prior to the matchup during their ring entrances, set part of the structure on fire. And as you can see, this black tuxedo received quite a beating at the hands of that fire extinguisher, JB. Well, it certainly did. I'll tell you what, Mike, we've, we've seen so many amazing things here in TNA. <laughs> we've seen some pretty unusual things here in TNA. Never anything like this before, but let us assure you, uh, we've gotten word that I believe they have cleared the building now for, for re-entrance. We're going to uh, get it up and going here momentarily. And I'll tell you what, we're going to look at what happened here momentarily. We're outside the impact zone. Uh, it's a little bit chaotic out here, and you can certainly understand why. That's an understatement. Yeah, it certainly uh, covered TV news for a few years. Never anything like this before. <laughs> Right now, you see what's happening inside the uh, impact zone as they are 
We also want to let you know, wait, got more wait, information. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Don West here just Don, we're Don, we're taking a look at, at what went down earlier. Let's let's recap this situation. And there you see, when they use the fire extinguishers, when they came into play, that's what created that smoke cloud that just completely engulfed the building, forcing the evacuation. There you see what went down just minutes ago inside the arena. Don West has now joined myself and Jeremy Borash outside the impact zone. And, DW, I understand you've got an update for we us. we got news. They are loading the impact zone back in right now. Don't awesome. go anywhere, right. folks. Yep. We're so heading we're, in. I'm going to head in right it's now. coming up. Yeah, Don, it I'll is. tell you what. If you could, I'm going to stick around. I'm going to go inside, <laughs> see how things are looking inside. Go ahead. Take hold, down the, hold down the Fort JB, and we will bring you all the up-to-the-minute details just as soon as we have them. The word that we're getting is that we're now just minutes away minutes from away. resuming the pay-per-view. Don, the fans are being taken they're, back they, into the building. They're not going anywhere. They're being loaded right back into the impact zone. They've given the all okay. Unbelievable situation. This will be talked about forever. Huh. But let me tell you something. Sting, Jeff Jarrett still coming up. I'm talking Samoa Joe, Rhino, Monty Brown still coming up. The X Division right. title, the tag titles. Don't go anywhere. This is going to be unreal. We'll see how all this unfolds and who will it rattle and who won't it rattle think about that can you believe this i mean in all the years that i've been involved with professional wrestling and live television never anything remotely like this it's been quite an experience ladies and gentlemen tonight at hard justice but we still as don said have a full card of professional wrestling to come tonight including sting and jeff jarrett for the nwa world's heavyweight title all the championship matchups that are going down as you see now the firemen here outside the building at hard justice and they've done everything within their power evacuating the building to make sure that it's safe and secure to get the people back inside and resume this pay-per-view event wow I'll tell you, well they were here they were on the spot they got it done the crowd didn't want to go out they didn't care but they had to evacuate all of us had to be and now folks they're bringing them all back in everything is clear and as soon as we can we're going to get it back underway you know if you think about it that was maybe the most amazing aspect of all of this the fact that during that eric young johnny divine matchup when, yes, the pyro set part of the building on fire and the fire extinguisher was put into play, not a fan moved from the no. building. They continued to watch Eric Young and Johnny Devine and react right along with the match. But then the fire marshal forced the evacuation of the building. That brings us to where we're at right now. We're reloading the arena. We're going to go back inside momentarily and resume the pay-per-view. Wow. Folks, don't go anywhere. I, again, I know this is as bizarre as any pay-per-view you've ever seen but that's just going to make it that much more interesting that much more because you got to look now at who's going to be rattled by this who's going to be affected by this titles are on the line people right now they're panicked they've gotten in panic mode the crowd's going to be a frenzy exactly. it's going to be different i mean don it's such a chaotic situation here in the building although i have to admit that the fans when they were evacuated they went out in a very orderly fashion yes. there was no panic at all in the ring None. but the chaos is more outside here with the wrestlers i think trying to find out exactly what's up next, trying to get word when we're going to resume the pay-per-view, and we understand that it's just minutes away. Now you take a look inside the building, and again, this is live as live can be, and you see that the fans are moving back into place, and we're about ready to send it back inside. We're about ready to head back Mike, inside. Mike, it's hotter out here than it was when the fire was going on in the building. You're I right. I mean, the humidity... You know yeah. what? It doesn't matter. We may lose 10 pounds. We're going back in. That, that won't and hurt. We're going to do it anyway, folks. You're right. It has been a hot, humid day here in Orlando, Florida, and the fire inside the arena just added to the heat, the emotion, the chaos that's all a part of this hard justice pay-per-view. Fans being moved back into position, and I can't wait to get this pay-per-view kicked back off. I mean, we've got three championship matchups yet to come tonight, plus Sting and Jarrett. So much at stake, so much on the line tonight at Hard Justice. Obviously, due to the way the time situation has, they will have to make some decisions. They will have to probably be some things that you won't see, but everything that's on the line, X Division titles, tag titles, heavyweight championships, the falls count anywhere, everything they can, they're going to get in, and it will be intense. Maybe this is just a little preview of that Falls Count yeah. Anywhere matchup time. They might which, start it out here outside in which a second. we anticipated <laughs> was going to go not just all over the building, but possibly outside as well. Although I never thought in a million years that you and I would be out here on live TV, standing outside the arena, bringing people up to speed with everything that's going on. Unbelievable moment. It was, it was one of those things where even though you and I were looking up and right. seeing the fire and, and seeing the the spray come down on the people the match was so good between eric young and johnny divine and so much was important you know i mentioned it but it reminded me so much of that fog ball right. of chicago and philadelphia and trying to figure out what's going on 
Hey, guys, listen. Eric Jim, Young joins us live. What's up, EY? Jim Cornette has got to know this had nothing to do with me. I, hey, the, got a little hot in there tonight. I'm not even sure if your match counts now. I, the, uh, yes, what are you talking I'm about? I'm just you kidding. I'm all paranoid he is. I had to try it. I had to try it. Hey, you, hey, hey, we're good. Jim Cornette's got to know this wasn't my fault. This wasn't my fault, but we're going to go back into the building now. I got everything cleared up. Me and my good friend, Uncle Jeff, we got all the situation taken care of. We're Uncle going back Jeff. To the pay-per-view. The Pied Piper himself, yeah, follow me and Eric friend. Young. Are we ready? It was amazing the way that the fans, Don, it was amazing the way that the fans followed Eric Young into the arena before the opening matchup. Yeah, 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 whatever, whatever, whatever. Alpha male yeah. Monty Brown. The alpha male Monty Brown, get it right. You feel that? You feel that? Well, let me tell something right here. And let me blaze everybody who's been talking about the alpha male. Group you all together and blaze you all at one time. Starting with you, Joe. Fat Joe. You want a false count anywhere, anytime, any place? Match with the alpha male? And you, <laughs> Rhino. The only carnivore on the Serengeti is the alpha male. Fat Joe, he's the undefeated Samoan submission machine. Well over a year, Samoa Joe has been here in TNA, never been pinned, never submitted. You have the opportunity to break that streak later tonight, falls count anywhere, but the war machine is also involved. Please. Hey, Joe, why are you running around with that cheeseburger in your hand? And you, Rhino, <laughs> I got something for both of you. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you think. Like I said, I'm blazing everybody tonight. Joe, you may be undefeated going in, but you won't be undefeated going out. You know, and the alpha male knows, that no one can stop the most dominant male on two feet. G'd up from the feet up constantly. Looking so fly, I, 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 I. And then it's time for war. And that is the war that I'll bring to the so-called war machine, Rhino. Because he cannot deal with the alpha male. You don't want to admit it, I know, Don. You don't want to admit it, Tanae. It doesn't matter. But the truth remains the same. The alpha male was here. The alpha male was the first. The alpha male will be the last. I am the alpha male. The alpha male is me, he is I, and I am him. No one can stop me. You all know it, they know it, and tonight, Fat Joe, or whatever you want to call, you call him what you want to, I call him a hippophant. Half hippo, half elephant, hippophant. And you, Rhino, a herbivore, you don't know what that means, I know you don't, but you're a plant eater. The real deal is standing before you. The alpha male. What else, stupid? Monty you Brown, the alpha male. You have to consider the fact that in this three way matchup, the TNA management, Jim Cornette, you know he's going to be watching very closely at this bout, and one would presume that the winner of this match takes huge strides in moving toward a shot at the eventual NWA World Heavyweight Champion. The alpha male could care less whether Jim Cornette's watching. The alpha male could care less whoever's watching. I have business to take care of on the Serengeti. That is my watering hole. No one takes it from me tonight. Someone will feel the power. Period. You'll have that opportunity in the three-way matchup. Are we ready to go back inside the arena? Keith, if you can let me know. Don, I understand the fans are back in place, and we are just seconds away from going back live inside the building. There you see the fans going back inside the impact zone. And going in as a mob. They are so ready to get this thing going on. You heard Monty Brown. He's fired up. I just went over there, and I'm coming right this way. We've got Shane Douglas. Right, listen up. Listen up right now. You see, it's this kind of adversity that the franchise has dealt with for 25 years in this business. You both understand what I'm saying to you? It is moments like these that makes great people, that make great wrestlers. You think George Bush is a great president? He is so because he had a war of terrorism thrown on his lap. He rose to the challenge. Can you, can you rise to the challenge, Professor? 
You've known me for a long, long time, and you know that throughout my career, I have always risen to the challenge, proven to the world that I was what I say I am, the very best, the very best in the entire world, the franchise of every company I've worked for. Now, you think some little fire in the building is putting the fire out in that chest? Is it putting out the fire in that chest? You have got to be ready at all times. All times. Remember I told you last week when Steiner and Jared jumped you, you have to have eyes in the back of your head. That sixth sense that makes you the very best. Physically, you both have it. Tonight, we find out if mentally the newly franchised naturals have what it takes to rise up and become the very best in the world, to become the franchises, to become the tag team champions of TNA. I know what you have inside of them. I know, Professor. Now the question is, do you come over this adversity or do you let it beat you? It's that simple of a question. Now, are you ready? We're ready. I said, are you ready? We're ready. Then let's get it done. <laughs> the newly franchised Naturals, one of four teams to compete for an upcoming tag team title shot. Whoever emerges from this match to be the number one contenders. Are we ready to send it to JB right now? Jeremy Borash with Alex Shelley. Take it, JB. Backstage here with Alex Shelley of Paparazzi Productions. Alex, we heard from you on the pre-show. Kevin Nash unable to compete tonight in the X Division match. Is that true? Absolutely, 1,000% true. When TNA releases a 50 saddest moments in TNA history, I have no doubt in my heart of hearts, this is going to be moment number one. Kevin Nash is suffering from a very, very serious neck ailment. One where he could risk paralysis if he gets in the ring tonight, my friend. Ah, well, we've seen this before. Anyway, we expect really to believe this? You, you, you really saying he's not going to compete tonight? He's got a neck injury? Yeah. Yeah, he has a neck injury. I'm face to face with a human who lacks complete empathy, complete compassion for his fellow man. And you know what? If you don't believe me, Johnny, can we bring him in? Is he brave enough? Oh. Is he brave? Easy does it. His neck. Is there a cup on <sighs> No, it's just me. <sighs> neck injury? It's the darkest day of my life. I was going to leave tonight the number one contender soon to be X Division champion. Now, this injury, it's not gonna happen. All I can do is do what Alex would do for me and give him 100% of my moral support. Alex, tonight, I want you to go to war. I gotta give you something. Have it easy. Easy does it. Johnny, be careful. I think you're gonna need these a little more than I will. Go to war, young man. You're damn go right. War. Let's go. Easy, easy. You want to get Ladies and gentlemen, TNA's Hard Justin continues with his X Division number one contenders match. Introducing first, from Hill, Michigan, Chris Saban. Saban right now in the ring. We're going to give this a shot here, gang. And here is the opponent for Chris Saban, the substitute for Kevin Nash. Go. And ladies and gentlemen, his opponent from Detroit, Michigan, Helen Shelley. Ooh. Okay, Mike today, Don West, now back inside the building, and we're going to the Hard Justice pay-per-view. DW, you ready to rock and roll, my brother? Let's do it, my friend. Here we go. Kevin Nash being wheeled out. If we could see this right here in front of us in a wheelchair, his neck in a brace. Did you hear how he hurt himself, Mike? No, I have to admit I didn't. I was outside by the fire truck. I'm trying to find out how he hurt himself, but makes me wonder what's going on right there and again. You got you. You know Kevin Nash. I've got to ask you. I, it, it, I just I don't think it's beneath me to speculate what's going on with Kevin Nash and why he's out here. And, and, and you got to question whether what really happened happened. In other words, you're not buying into his crap. No. Is that what you want to tell me? Well, it's hard. I'm sorry. 
I think it's a situation where he realized the speed of a Chris Saban, realized what an X-Division competitor can do in the shape of their lives, and knowing Alex Shelley also wants a shot at that number one contendership, maybe a great move on, on Kevin Nash's part. I'm going to give him that. But again, I've got a question what's going on, and you can see right there, he does have the brace on, and he is in pain. And I know why you question it. It's because of his track record. And I don't blame you for questioning it, and I question just as well. But now the opportunity goes to Alex Shelley to take that next step. You know, Chris Saban's been there before, former X Division champion. Alex Shelley for Paparazzi Productions. He's never been the title holder in the X Division. This is an opportunity with a win here for Shelley to move right into that number one contender slot to face the winner of the three-way X match that's yet to come tonight at this pay-per-view, and you're right. You know when they write the history books on this one? <laughs> you <laughs> this, know what? You, see, you said it several times. This will be a night, August 13th, 2006, Hard Justice, and we will never, ever forget. And you can see such great action, and Alex Shelley, such a different person. Johnny Devine just came down here and got, got next to Kevin Nash. He's got his feet propped up. His neck is absolutely, from what I'm hearing, he can't move it. He's not supposed to be moving as he's cheering on Alex Shelley, but I want to say this though, Mike. I want to, I think a big special thank you goes out, not only to the fire department for getting everything done, evacuated and checked, a, a great applause goes to these fans. Not exactly. one of them left, to my knowledge. Not one fan left, to my knowledge. And I want to thank all the crew for getting everything cleaned up and these guys ready to roll. Oh, you're not kidding. And the way that the fans were able to evacuate the building and make their way back in, Don, Really great to see the TNA fans here as a part of a wild, wild night. Let's get back to the action. Check out the springboard. And the drop kick from Saban. And that baby caught Shelly right in the chest. You know, you got to wonder what's going through Chris Saban's mind. Obviously, it might be something that backfires on Kevin Nash and Alex Shelly because Chris Saban might be ticked. That's who he wanted in the ring. That's who he prepared for in the ring. Kevin Nash. Now he's facing Alex Shelley. Oh. And you got to wonder how he's going to respond. Right now, he's responding like a champion does. You know, I see Chris Saban in the ring. I see Alex Shelley. I see Kevin Nash around ringside. And I have to think about the state of Michigan and the Detroit area in particular. All three of these men, the Detroit, Michigan, as part of their background and their careers, Saban from Hell, Michigan. Of course, Alex Shelley living in Detroit, Michigan. Kevin Nash from Detroit, October the 22nd. It's Bound for Glory, the biggest pay-per-view in our history. I want to remind you, we're taking TNA on the road to Detroit. Bound for Glory. Tickets now on sale. Copyware Arena. Ticketmaster locations. Online at Ticketmaster.com. And Don, fans are coming from all over the world. Not just North America. Not just the U.S. and Canada. From all over the world to be a part of Bound for Glory weekend. And they should because it is a fan fest. Let me tell you something. It is an all-day event. I mean, on Saturday beforehand, you will get to meet the wrestlers. You will get to get autographs. You'll get to hang out and see them in a different light than what you see them out here in the ring. It's something that no wrestling fan should pass up because it's something that will live in your mind forever and ever and ever and you'll talk about it for the rest of your life so come for the entire weekend you're right fan fest oh october 21st head and bound for glory and look at shelly go for the pin and get another near fall on saban you can see kevin nash putting the the hand up there slowly like that give him the old way to go alex shelly what a nice comeback here alex shelly somebody you know he always seemed to have an agenda, whether it was filming Sting, True. like we saw earlier, or, or getting involved in this mess with Whoa. Kevin Nash, but he's somebody that we've always talked about how good he is, how incredibly talented he is, and one day he would be vying Watch for this. the X Division Championship. Oh, suicide dive right to the rope. Yeah, almost in the lap of Kevin Nash, right next to Nash in the wheelchair, yeah, with the neck brace. Don't even think about it, Nash. Oh, Kevin Nash, you gotta wonder what's going through his mind if he really is as hurt as he says he is. As you can see him trying to help Alex Shelley up, but I'll tell you what, look at him grab his neck. Yeah. I mean, he's not showing any real outward signs of this, you know, faking it. I, yeah. You know, maybe he's really hurt. Sure. Yeah, if I can break out the old cliche, only lies when his lips move. Uh-oh, crotch claw applied by Alex Shelley to Saban. Now that's the way Alex Shelley is. Any shortcut he can take. Oh, nice spin kick, and then a nice kick to the back of the head. The follow ends Zagiri, and then oh. he takes his legs out with the drop kick. Look how quickly Saban springs over the top. Here he comes, drops the leg, cover him, get the pin. One, one two, pin. got it. No. Oh, he almost was fine for the 10. And keep in mind, whoever wins this match tonight will face the winner 
will be the number one contender, which later on will be decided when Sin Chi, the defending champion, takes on Jay Lethal. And of course, the Canadian destroyer, Petey Williams. So much oh, at stake oh, in the new X Division, man. Wow, did Saban just oh, kick him in kick. the corner? What a kick, what a boot. Shelly rocked with that move, and now Saban gonna position Shelly up on the top. Be prepared for something high risk, here it comes. Oh, look at this, so Alex Shelley, oh, Alex Shelley got it to go right his way, and that knee perfectly placed. You're right, inverted knee. Look the at top. that! The multiple revolutions into the submission hole. He had the arm bar, and now he's got the head seized as well. He's got the arm, he's got the head, breaking on the neck. Submission hole applied by Shelley. Is saving to the tap, or can he make it to the rope for oh, the break? He's trying not to tap. He's trying to get to the ropes, but that move was so, oh, he barely gets to the ropes, and that was just hard. That was God's and determination because Alex Shelley had it right there. So close to getting Saban to tap out. Just notice the armband on Alex Shelley. I guess Devine had it as well. Kev, K-E-V, the black armband. Couldn't see it through the fog and smoke in that opening matchup. Oh, there it is, the Kev armband. I do see the Kev armband. Why don't they just wear one on the other arm and have big Kev? I mean, you're gonna brown nose, brown nose all the way. Alex oh, Shelley, could it be the hesitation drop Here kick? Here it comes! Yeah! Oh, 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 wow. Baby. I love that thing, man. You love that hesitation move, right? It just, just, like... just before the point of contact. Here he comes, out of the corner. Whoa! Just spins him around the way he wants him. Cover! Him. Two! Ooh. Got it! No. Oh, I so no. close! No, 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 just two! Oh, come on! Oh, he was pinned, man. Well, he wasn't, says the referee, Andrew Thomas. Right back to the offensive. Saban gonna take him up. Is it a suplex? Nope. Yeah, front suplex, sort of. Then positions him again up on top here. Saban gonna follow up. Now he's gonna go high, high risk again. Didn't work last time. And now Shelly cuts him off, and he's gnawing on his head. Oh, he'll bite, he'll poke. He'll do anything he has to do, and look at this. Rolling up under and then gets the ball, and then the back, the knees to the back. Think of the pain, look at the pain on Saban's face. You're right, crack the back. Backcracker applied there by Shelly. Ready, shell shot! He hits Johnny it. Devine this up on the it. apron. Wait. Johnny Devine's actually... He, he cost oh, him, maybe. Three count, no, just two. Johnny Devine talking to the referee. That momentary distraction may have cost... Uh-oh, Shelly. Nash threw a chair in. I saw that's it. Why he, that's why he did that to the I'm referee. I'm on the same page now. Nash put the chair in. Slice spread. No. no. Landed on his feet. He's got the steel chair. Look out. A swing and a miss. Nice kick by Saban right back into the head of Alex Shelley. Can he take advantage? Could it be cradle shock time? He's got him up in it, Johnny Devine. It didn't work because Alex Shelley is in a bad way. And he hits it. He nails Count it. One, two, two. it's done. Ladies and gentlemen, here is your winner, Chris Saban! Well, whatever Kevin Nash's plan was, didn't work. Whether he is legitimately hurt or not, Alex Shelley put into the matchup. Saban comes away victorious. He's the number one contender. Well, look at the face right there of Kevin Nash. I mean, listen, he's not even moving right now. I believe that if he wasn't hurt, he would have found a way to get in that ring and have a distraction. It makes me realize he must be hurt and it caused Alex Shelley. Chris Saban, victorious. New number one contender to whoever emerges later tonight in the X Division title match. Let's send it to the back. JB standing by. Take it, Jeremy. James Mitchell, last week on Impact, Brother Runt took things to new heights against your six foot eight monster abyss. Tonight, does he stand a fighting chance? Does a snarling, rabid chihuahua stand a fighting chance against a pit bull? No. Brother Runt, you are a one-man infestation. You're a cockroach that doesn't have enough sense to scurry out of harm's way. You know, Runt, you should have listened to your brothers in Team 3D when they told you to lay low. They told you to stay out of trouble, but you didn't take their advice. Why? Well, the speculation, Borash, is that he's been taking advice from Raven. And if that's true, you're doomed. Ah! I can see Raven right now filling your head with nonsense about how a 140 pound man stands a fighting chance against a six foot eight, 350 pound weapon of mass destruction. I can hear him now telling you stories about Jack and the Beanstalk and David and Goliath. 
Well, the one thing those stories have in common with the notion of you beating Abyss is that they are fairy tales. And yours is going to have an unhappy ending. Because when I give the doomsday signal, mm. this monster Abyss is mm. going to black hole slam you. And you, Brother mm. Run, are going to live miserably ever after. <laughs> 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 After a brutal beating at Victory Road, he was told to keep a low profile. But we need you to do us a favor. A big favor. And behave yourself. And most of all, hold it down for the family until we return. Don't get in any trouble. But wherever he goes, Brother Runt always picks a fight with the biggest man he can find. That's Brother Runt! That's Brother Runt! We, we heard D3D tell him to stay out of trouble. What is he thinking, like? Well, when you pick a fight with a monster like that, you better be prepared. Sometimes, a man's quest for vengeance blinds him to reality. In every locker room I've ever been in, I look for the biggest, the baddest, the meanest son of a gun, and I walk up to him and I smack him in the face! The best big man in the business battles a little man with bold ambitions and a warrior's heart. I'm not scared of anyone. I'm your worst nightmare. I'm a 140-pound run with nothing to lose. Any place, any time, any type of match, I'm coming for you! Run! You're real funny! Well, why don't you see how funny this is, you little cockroach? Rage, vengeance, and sheer brutality. Did you see that? You've got to be kidding me! Brother Runt, the Monster Abyss, next. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, accompanied to the ring by Father James Mitchell for Parts Unknown. Weighing 350 pounds, he is the monster, Opus! You look at this matchup on paper, you see someone who is 6 feet 8, 350 pounds of uncontrollable rage. You factor in James Mitchell in his corner. And when you consider that they're going to go against Brother Run, you think that the Brother Run would have absolutely no chance, but that means you don't know Brother Run what he's all about. Well, this is the guy that doesn't have a sane bone in his body, obviously. And if you're insane like Brother Run is, then you've got just as much of a chance because he's not convinced he can lose to this guy. And his opponent from New York City, Brother Run! Oh, check this out. Looks like the guy from Taxi. <laughs> A new look for Brother Run, sporting the mohawk. Does he not? That looks like De Niro from Taxi. That he was crazy. That's the mindset that Brother Run has here, Mike. He's not afraid of anything. I mean, look at that look he's got. Remember what went down this week on Impact? Brother Run with the signs all over the arena. Trying to get under the skin of the man, trying to take him out of his game, and trying to get in his mind even before the matchup. But will you ever forget that incredible dive oh, from man. Brother Run from the top of the entrance ramp onto the monster? I mean, it's just the, the distance that he went. That's the guy, look at him, look at his face. He, he, he's crazy. He picks the biggest guy in the company, and he goes right after him. I mean, look at that. Just psyching himself up, but keep in mind. Here it is. There's a thing called gravity. And there's a thing called size. And if that size able to use that and plant that black hole slam on Brother Run, it doesn't matter how uh -oh. great he is, uh -oh. he won't last. High overhead. Brother Run really took it to a miss. He comes look at this. He try to take him down, put those headbutts right into the midsection. Again off the rope, swing with the clothes wide, does not connect. Uh oh, that's like running into that concrete wall. That was like a mosquito right there. It's much as he tried it now. Uh -oh. Come on. Oh! All the way! All the way over the rail and into the crowd! How crazy was that? Wow! Plus, brother, one! You're right, Don. That was, what would you say, five, six feet will oh. pass the guardrail? I, I can't pass the guardrail. About 20 feet tall. He threw it. Listen to this crowd. Back fired up. 
And Abyss going to do it again, but Brother Run doesn't lose his concentration. Brown surfed him right back in. Oh, did he go for the drop? And he just dropped him right on the steel guardrail. That's the way to turn it in your favor. I mean, does he have to drop as Raven looks on? Raven obviously sees something in Brother Run that appeals to his mindset. And now Brother Run right off the top, right on Abyss. He's doing everything he can. The drop right on the rail and then shooting right off. Brother Run, the top bottom line, he's just absolutely fearless. I don't know if it's just a case where he doesn't know any better. He, he's going around the six-sided ring looking for something to use as a weapon. It's like he's going to settle on a couple of steel chairs. You know, I think there's that thought in the locker room as we see Raven repeatedly out here during Brother Run's matchup that Raven is getting into the mind of Brother Run. I think it's something that just appeals to him. I mean, we know how diabolical Raven is. We, we don't know how his mind works, but we know he's always thinking in, in mysterious ways, and there's something about Brother Run, I think, that really sparks his interest. Able to move out of the way and avoid the contact of the corner. Now shot off, you see that far side of the ring. There's a steel chair win. Oh my gosh, look at that. Just slammed him right through it, Mike. Looks like he's wearing that chair like a necktie. Oh, it's like a dog collar. Oh man, and he falls out of it net. The pain has just got to be excruciating. He's still moving. Monster Abyss just timed that perfectly. And you know when this 6'8", 350-pound monster is on the loose, he's just one black hole slam away from a 1-2-3 and the winner of this matchup. Now, Brother Runt over that top rope, just hung out there while Abyss just continues to beat on him. And, you know, we've seen this in the past. He fires up in the corner and then just charges right across. Obviously, the chair shot still ringing the bell there of, of Brother Run as he not, not able to get out of the way. And I don't know if Raven's showing concern there or not. But How, can you, tell? How can you tell with Raven whether it's concern? It's obvious interest. There's no question about that. Now, Abyss sees that Brother Runt basically is out on his feet at this point. Going to hang in here across the top. Look out! Look Runt, at this. Runt's got Abyss's chain. Can he turn it around and use it against him? Yeah, going to use it as a weapon. He caught him. He punched him right with the steel chain. Oh, double foot stomp off the top. Just plant him, and that's what you Ten, gotta use. Two, two. Got oh, it, no. no. Abyss throws him off with that superior strength that he has on Brother Runt, but he doesn't have that cycle ability like Brother Runt does to take on all challenges. And could he be going for the acid drop again? Yes! Oh, he, it. he hit it! Cover him! Pin! Two! Oh, man! Brother Runt's so close, and then Abyss just flings him again. Mitchell from ringside trying to not only cheer his man on, but offer some sort of strategy. Uh-oh, contact made with the referee. Slick Johnson, Brother Runt stacked up in the corner. You talk about contact made with the referee. 350 of Abyss just crashed into Slick Johnson. Think about this. Did you see the bag of tags there that James Mitchell has got in his hand? Oh, man, just on the shoulders and just charred the bones of Brother Run. Referee out of play. Monster making his way towards that, that bag. And We've seen this before from Abyss. You mentioned the thumbtacks. Going to use those here, obviously, to try and take Run completely out of this match. And there it is, going to spread him across the mat. Oh, man, just setting him all over the mat right there. And I just don't know if he black hole slams Brother Run onto those tacks. You're talking 350 on top of, what, 140? That'll just, that'll, that may end the career of Brother Run right there. I mean, this was a fight he shouldn't have picked. This was a fight that Brother Runt was too big, too much for him to chew. And look ah, at him, putting the ah, forehead. Oh, my God, ah. he's taking his face. He took his face, he took his forehead, and he put him right into the thumbtacks. Just grinding him right there into his head. Look at that, you can see him out. And then he foot stomped his head right into the tack. For the love of God. That's just the most gross thing I think I've seen in hype. Look at this. Going to try and take those thumbtacks and pull them out of his head, his brother Run. You know what? It's, almost as, it's if he's using that, Don, to get fired back up and look at brother Run. He is. He's just throwing everything he's got. Haymaker after Haymaker. Headbutting a bit. One headbutt after another. Here he comes. Oh, but the strength. Oh, ah, right ah. 
high oh. overhead. He press slammed him body first right into the tax. Oh man, how many kicks can this man take into his body as he's trying to fight to his feet? But Abyss, who we see having backfire on him and landing the tax himself. Oh no, black hole slam. That's got to be it. Right into the Please. tax. Throw a towel in there. Where's the ref? Get a ref in there and count this out. Slick Johnson in for the count. It's over. It's over. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, the Monster Abyss. Oh, I was going to go in there and count it out if they didn't do it soon. Just to stop this brutality. You admire his courage, but you just got to wonder what Brother Rutt was thinking. Why on earth do you challenge that man? Why on earth? You admire his courage, but you question his sanity. Look at the thumbtacks. Head to toe on Brother Run as Raven looks on. And Raven giving his, his pose that he's known for, staring on to the situation. You gotta be wondering what's going through his mind. If we could see oh, some I'd replays. I'd, I'd love to take another look at some of the highlights of this matchup. Oh, that look on Raven's face. Oh, Here we go. Oh, right through the chair. I mean, that was devastating enough. And then the double foot stomp right on the chest of the monster. It looked like it was gonna go his way for a bit there. Well, it sure did. Brother Run was in control of this matchup until the thumbtacks came into play. He took him by the head and put him face first. Oh, but that was that was the one dot. That and he just, stomped the back of his head and he went, oh my goodness. Just bounces him right off like a rubber ball and then the black hole slam. And I mean, he was brutal on that slam. And now he's pressing himself in there even more. And then it takes the ref a long time to count this out because he's out of the ring. Poor Brother Run. But you know what? He made this challenge. You make that bed, you're gonna lie in it. Monster Abyss prevails, Brother Run still pulling the thumbtacks out of his body. What a gutsy, what a courageous performance from Brother Run. But in the end, the monster, just too much. Just too powerful, too strong. We're gonna send it to the back. Jeremy Boras standing by with the War Machine Rhino. All yours, JB. Thanks a lot, guys, and as if this building has not already sustained enough damage, up next, Total Nonstop Action Wrestling presents to you Falls Count Anywhere. You know what? Moments ago, people were running around in a panic. People were running around. They were going crazy, but I wasn't going crazy. Why? Because I'm already crazy. I was pushing people aside. I was looking for you, Samoa Joe. Why? So I could take my fist and punch your teeth out. I was looking for you, Monty Brown. Why? So I can rape your face with my fist. I came here tonight not to watch a building burn, but I came here to destroy a building, to destroy you, Monty Brown, in front of the people. Hell, I'll go into the people. That's if the people want me to bring the fight to them. I don't think you heard me. Do you want me to bring the fight to you? See, I'm gonna take the fight anywhere I want to, and I'm gonna finish this night with a broken down building, and as the fires rain from above, I will cut someone in half. You, Monty Brown, or you, Samojo, with a gore! 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 It doesn't matter who you work for, what up, bring your ass to the impact zone and face me face to face. Rhino, you've thrown out your challenge. Nothing makes me feel better than a good old fashioned brawl. Rhino and Samoa Joe do not deserve to be on the Serengeti. I'm going to show all you people who the true alpha male is. I'm never coming down. And it's a false count anywhere, so that means I don't have to stay in this way. I can bring Monty Brown over to this table right here and pile drive him through to the ground. You want me to bring some Joe over here and punch his teeth down his throat? Sunday at Hard Justice, Rhino. Monty Brown, you will understand why I am the Samoan submission machine. The end result is always the same. Gore! Gore! Gore!
and our justice, all you will see is the wow! The public face of TNA management, Jim Cornette, says we're going to turn these three loose. It's Falls Count Anywhere. It's Rhino, it's Samoa Joe, it's Monty Brown. Here's the introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, the following is a three-way Falls Count Anywhere match. Introducing first, from the Serengeti, he is the alpha male, Monty Brown. Don, we saw that the alpha male was ultra confident about this matchup. If I'm Monty Brown, I don't know that, that I'm going to badmouth Samoa Joe and Rhino to that point. I mean, does that do any good? I mean, it certainly gains confidence. You know, he's building up his own confidence. I think he's building a fire, so to speak, under Joe and Rhino. Well, you've got to show no fear. And I think that's what Monty Brown, the message he was trying to get across there, Mike, was he's not afraid of Samoa Joe. He's not afraid of Rhino. He's the alpha male. From Detroit, Michigan, he is the war machine, Bruno! He says, if I have to bring the fight to the people, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Oh yeah, look at the war machine. Look at the way that he's going all around the ring here. And look who he's got in his sights, the alpha male. Well, he just used the fire earlier, I think, to feed the fire in his soul. And finally, he is the undefeated Samoan submission machine, Samoa Joe! 14 months and counting, Samoa Joe, unbeaten in TNA, never been pinned, never submitted. Here we go, it's Joe and Rhino locking up, and here comes the alpha male. Falls count anywhere. I mean, I would not want to be the referee for this match anyway whatsoever. You got to make sure you stay out of the way. And like you said, anything, anywhere, any place, falls count anywhere. And you can bet it's going to get into the people. Rhino's already promised that. Monty Brown showing no fear earlier. And then again, Samoa Joe, he's never been pinned. He's never submitted. And you know he wants to keep that streak alive. I don't think there's any way that the six sides, Don, can contain these three. Short arm clothesline by the alpha male, Deck Joe. Series of chops here. Rhino and Monty Brown exchange the knife edge, shot off into the ropes. Rhino puts on the brakes and tosses the alpha male down to the floor. Look out, Rhino, that's 300 pounds. Oh, just as Monty Brown was walking back toward the ring, Rhino just slinks down on himself over the top rope. And wait a minute, he doesn't realize it. Here comes Samoa Joe. He dives through and just busts Rhino right here. And look at the look on Joe's face. Man, is he fired up. His lip is trembling. He fires off a right hand to the side of the head of Rhino. It's the machines, the Samoan submission machine and the war machine exchanging here. Here goes Rhino oh. into the scale. It's fast, but while he does that, Bobby Brown grabs the trash can and smashes Joe, and then he smashes Rhino. And now Bonnie Brown has the upper hand. Momentarily, oh! oh. Wow, he punted it right into his face. He put it in right in his face. Football's right around the corner, and yep, Samoa Joe, he's obviously ready for the upcoming football season, cutting the trash can right in the face of a former National Football League linebacker, by the way. These are three of the biggest, baddest dudes you're ever going to see in the ring at one time. Oh, he just face washed him with that boot right over the face into the rail. Remember several months ago when he did that to Christopher Daniels? Look at this exchange now. Rhino and Samoa Joe, who's going to get the better of it? Oh, you can see Joe right there goes over the rail. Probably a good move. Get yourself a little barrier between you and the war machine right now because the war machine is fired up. Practice that tray. Now, Kendo stick, and he's going to go right into the people. This is what he said. If I have to bring the fight to the people, I'll do it. Oh, my gosh, the pain of that. A man 280 pounds, 90 pounds. And now he's going to use the kendo stick as a weapon around the throat to try and choke the life out of Joe. And Samoa Joe comes back with a shot. And he goes right at him. Joe's one of those that, you know, he's like the rest of them. He thrives on pain. Here he comes. Oh, right into the wall. Just smashed it right into the wall. 
Look at the fire in his face. I don't know if we can get a close up there on Flo and Joe. Oh man, I just get the look. The crowd telling you what they think of everything. You're right, that's a holy bleep moment from Samoa Joe. Because he just put Rhino right through the wall and the look on his face, he is like a man possessed. But you can't forget about Bonnie Brown. All the way over the top of the rail. Oh, I saw him. I saw him lining it up right in front of us there. We saw that coming. Rhino and Samoa Joe, they never saw a coming referee down for the count. Was that three? I uh, he's calling somebody. Two, two only. Oh, Joe almost got pinned. I, I can't you wow. forget it falls count anywhere. And the referee Rudy Charles on top of it. Oh, oh he broke the wall right there. His head broke it. And now look at this. Joe goes right into it and they smashed it again. They're gonna tear down the building tonight in hard justice. Whatever's left of it. Oh my god, wow. Spray the whole thing down. They said they were gonna do it, and they're just peeling the wall apart now. Now it's the alpha male. Tell you something, these guys, they never let the distractions of what happened earlier stop them. In fact, it's almost like it's fueling their fire. It's almost like it's making them just that much more determined. It's Monty Brown right now got the upper hand. Monty Brown has both bodies on the ground, and he's just methodically going after one after the other. But look out! Pieces of the wall being used as a weapon. First the alpha male, and then Samoa Joe, and now all three are back on their feet, and falls count anywhere continues. I know right now, now he looks like he's trying to get the upper hand. No, he is! He's taking him all the way up into the stands! Well, they took it to the lower level of the people, and now they're going to the top of the building! Let's look at this crowd, they can't believe what they see. Alpha male, what. yeah, fighting back. Alpha male momentarily getting the better of it when Lino decided to, a little premature celebration, but, oh, just took him face first and tossed him. Oh, fly right in to the seats. Referee Rudy Charles, did he just use a crutch? He used a crutch right there. He caught him on the neck, now catching him on the back. As the crowd cheering him on, you can see the pain in Lino's face. You see the side, Joe's gonna kill you. Look at this, the crowd. It's in Alaska right now. Oh, you're not kidding. Anything that's not nailed down, it's fair game. Hey, give them their money's worth. These guys have been off the pace. They had to leave the building. They came back. Why not? Give them their, look at this crowd giving them cheers. Interactivity once again. Steel chair shot to the back of Wino from Joe. It's like Wino saw it coming. There was nowhere he could go. He just braced himself and took it. And Joe posing it in body. Can't do that. Cracks him. No way in a three-way match. This out of control. This wild. I mean, you know going in that you have to have almost eyes in the back of your head, Don, just to, to try and maintain in this match. And every time that somebody celebrates, they pay the price. Joe just took care of the alpha male and, oh, caught him with a great side kick. Nice kick right there. And you can see the headbutt from Joe. The kick on Nani and the headbutt on Rhino. Security's trying to keep him separated, but it's now what does he have? He's got the umbrella here, right? He just cracked it across his back. Crowd patting him as they go by, but they don't feel that. They're too focused on what's going on. And look at the determination. Oh! oh. As he walks right into the oh. trash can. Look at the look at the trash can lid. Look at the steel chair. <laughs> trash can lid for the alpha male. I'll tell you what, we've had brawls in this building. Uh -uh. But this one takes the cake. I mean, it's just been non-stop. Oh, as he suplexes him up on top of the ramp. Snap suplex by Rhino. Takes Monty Brown momentarily out of the match. Here these two big men square off. The machines are going at it. He's got him right up there by the tunnel. I think trying to, oh, belly oh, to belly. God, belly to belly on Joe. Bad landing. Oh, Joe caught the top of that one. It's kind of like a ridge. And you saw it. You can see it the door. door. He kicked it just in time, boys. And then the alpha male. Look at the strength oh. of the alpha male. These guys aren't going to have a bone left in their body. The Ten, crowd. count. Where is he? One, two, go. Oh, man, great job. The You're not getting sliding right into place to make the three count after that unbelievable double under a hook suplex. Now, it's the alpha male, Monty Brown, and Samoa Joe exchanging. Joe with the kick for Reiner to take him out of play. Oh, man, Monty. Man. Drop kick? Uh, a male with an unbelievable drop kick all the way up to the chin of Samoa Joe as he just nailed it right there. Ten, Here it goes. One, two. Oh, he just barely gets the shoulder.
are up in time. Win streak just this close to being extinguished here tonight at Heart Justice. And now, War Machine. He's waiting. Oh, he waited for the moment. Off the back and then the head. One shot after another. I can only keep up with this fight. Now, the alpha male rolled back inside the ring. Rhino looks like he's going to go underneath the ring. What else is there to grab? Any, anything that's not nailed down, like we said earlier. Cans, more trash can lids. Bring on the carnage. Well, carnage is what it's been. I mean, we have seen fights, and we knew it was going to materialize into this, but the fact that these guys can still stand after the beating that they've taken is a testament to how powerful they are. Look at Marty Brown. First, he fires him into the corner, decks him at the clothesline. Joe's going to come in here. Smart move by Joe to keep this match alive. You just can't forget about the third man. Every time it seems to be, oh, right to the, right to the groin right there with the knee. Oh, nice kick to the jaw. No, oh, he uses the trash can lid to land on the gun. Trash can senton. Yeah, he hit the backsplash with the lid. Listen to this crowd. Bananas. Oh, and Rhino used a steel chair to double over Joe, caught him right in the gut. <laughs> it's an electric crowd tonight after everything we've been through in this one. Spike Bust on the chair. Oh. Spike Bust for the chair. Pin. Two. He's got it. Oh. oh, I thought Joe was pinned. He almost had the streak broken. Just this close. Rhino seems to be in charge at this moment, but I don't know. I can't find Monty Brown. Don't forget about him, but right now it's Joe and it's Rhino. Oh, gonna try and get Joe up there. Good luck. Joe trying to fight it off at least momentarily. It's almost like he's probably glad to be sitting, but he got to know something bad's getting ready to happen. And he's stuck and he's out of breath and he's fighting. He's hitting him in the back. Look at this. High risk, but look at Joe! No! 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 Oh, and he slams him down. Pop up! Under the chair pin! One, two, two. I don't oh, believe it. I don't believe it. Up. I thought that was a three count as well. Who is going to come out of this the winner? These three warriors have absolutely put it all on the line. Can anybody come out the winner after this physical brutality? Yep, Alpha Male pulls Samoa Joe out to the floor and then reels off a shot to the top. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Right here. Oh, right here at the table. He's going. He's going. He's going. Trash can oh. shot to the back. Trash can shot right on the back of Joe. Marty Brown now is in total control. The kick to the head. And now he's got right over the ring. Joe's weary. Joe's out. After those shots, now the Marty Brown get the table from underneath the ring. Listen to this crowd. And where's he going to put this table? Joe absolutely out in front of us. Trying to catch his breath as Monty Brown setting it up. Rhino still in the ring. Monty Brown right now in total control. Joe. Oh! Joe his face and hit him with a tray. Yeah, paint tray to the top of the head. Alpha male not going to let that stop. And Monty Brown fights back. Oh, no. Takes Joe up oh, the ramp on this side. Look at this. He's setting him up for it. Is he going to do this? Joe holding on for dear life. Uh-oh. Uh Monty rocking. Look at these chops. Can he hang on? Can he balance himself? Oh, Joe able to get out of there. I thought he was going to slam him backwards. Taking it that. to the top. Oh, man, alpha male. Receiving end of several right hands and then these vicious knees from Joe. But it's just like the pain is driving him on. It's Monty Brown. Oh, Monty Brown fights back and he gets the knee in Joe's gut. Oh, right on top of the ramp right there. Look at the back of Joe's head. Desperation neck breaker by Monty Brown. Has Samoa Joe in trouble. I mean, think of this, neck breaker in the ring or the neck breaker where the back of your head crashes right onto the entrance ramp. That can't feel great. Then you got Grace right up there. Look at this, he's ready to do the pounce. Muddy Brown feels it. Joe's reeling, but here comes Rhino. All oh, before he can do it, Rhino. Able to get his breath and he's coming back full bore. War Machine charged from the ring with the trash can lid. And now he's got Joe and Monty Brown in trouble, and he's clearing off another table. He's grabbing another table. This is unbelievable battle between these three, Mike. Look at this Rhino setting it up. Setting another one, grabbing another table. 
What in the world? He's got to be setting it up to gore somebody through that. One would anticipate that that could be what he has in mind. Is it going to be the alpha male? That's where he goes first. Monty Brown taken up to the top, right into the wall. Man, they said he was going to tear this building down. Well, he, they're doing the best job they can. Look at this! Oh, he missed it! Monty gets out of the way! And it's Rhino that goes through both tables! Rhino bored himself in essence here! That's when the Alpha Male moved out of the way, he went for the bore, and he just went right through the wood. Ah, uh, uh, Bonnie Brown was so close! And look at Rhino, everything he had left! And look at the eyes of Monty Brown! He feels it now, and he goes right after Joe, but Joe's ready for him! Oh, both of them crashed to the table! Ten, two, three, he got him! Ladies and gentlemen, here is your winner, the undefeated Samoan Submission Machine, Samoa Joe! He used the STO on the Alpha Male, and he powered him right through the table. And he gets, miraculously, the one, two, three. And if you're not on your feet, either here in the building, if you're not on your feet at home, then damn it, you don't have a pulse. Joe, watch the microphone as he's grabbing the microphone. What a war! What a battle! And this crowd is over! TNA! I came here looking for a fight! And whether this son of a bitch burns down or not, I got one! And damn it, we can do it all over again! Wow! <laughs> oh, I don't know, guys in the truck, is there any way we can revisit the... This unbelievable balls count anywhere, Matt. That was worth the price. Look at that breaking right there. There was a door attempt that cost Rhino, and then the crowd got involved. There's that double under with the butterfly suplex. The war machine, yeah, he went for the door and ended up right through the table. And there it was, Monty sidestepping. Then Monty thought he had it, and then Rhino. I mean, now Joe took it to Monty and pinned him right there on the table. There you see it. STO through the table. The follow cover. The referee makes the three count. Samoa Joe remains unbeaten in TNA. There was no loser in this match. I'm going to tell you that right now. No loser. Physically, however, how are these three men going to be able to rebound? That's a question we'll answer in the months ahead. To the back, JB with Larry C. Larry. Larry Spitzer, come on. Quick question for you. Earl Hebner earlier, what's going on? Yeah, I saw Earl. The poor man lost his mind, obviously, but I'm not a mind reader, Jeremy. I don't know why he did what he did, okay? Where is he? I don't know. I had him thrown off the properties. We're in Orlando someplace. You had Earl Hebner thrown out of here? Yeah. I mean, obviously, he's lost his mind. Okay, all right. Well, uh, going back to Slammiversary a couple months now, when Jeff Jarrett won the World Heavyweight title, maybe there's a good opportunity for you to, you know, clear your good name for everyone. What are you talking about? Well, why don't you go ahead and admit right now that you had nothing to do with what happened? Well, you, admit what? Let me tell you something. Any of these stupid accusations are categorically denied. What about Earl Hebner? What was he in What about him? No, nothing. Nothing to do with it? Certainly not. The man's an official. Then why were the two of you the first ones to get out of there after that match? Did you see that match, Jeremy? Did you see the debris falling from the sky? Thousands of bottles, but it was an unsafe, it was a dangerous work environment. Little babies getting hit in the head with debris. I'm trying to save Excuse an official me, here. This is what? Very important. Larry, can you explain to me what the hell just happened out there? I mean, what's Hebner doing here? I thought he was fired. Explain to you? The guy lost his mind and started choking you because you're an idiot. You should be thanking me for bringing security out and stopping the whole fiasco. You know what I think? I think you know exactly what's going on. And you know what? I think that you, Hebner, and Jarrett have got something going on, and I'm going to find out That's about it, it. That's it. You stop this rumor stuff right now. Let me tell you something, you little Jiminy Cricket pest bastard. You're the one that brought this whole situation out with your stupid quest to become the senior referee, but you suck. I'm going to call Cornette right now, and I'm going to try my best to get you terminated immediately. You chrome don't pay me. Well, go call him. Do that. Why don't you call him? Look, no excuses, no justification. But you know, you whittle away all the interference, all the distractions, all of Gail Kim. Yeah. Something just bounced into the ring! Oh, look at that! Gail Kim! And the better team isn't America's Most Wanted, it's AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels. And we went out and we found Serelda and decided that she was going to be our race in the pool against Gail Kim. And when the time came, she did her job. I mean, if you want to know more about Serelda, you can ask Serelda. Or better yet, you can ask Gail Kim. And if there's one thing I can't stand, it's a cheater.
And that's you, Serelda. I'm so sick of you interfering. I'm so sick of you jumping me with my back turned. Well, let's just see how brave you are when you have to step in the ring with me, a true athlete, face to face at Hard Justice. Ladies and gentlemen, the following special contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, now residing in Tampa, Florida, Kim! What do you think of this outfit, DW? Are you kidding me? Man, oh man, I, I, it, it, you don't want to root for her because of all the distractions that she's caused so many times, but it's sure hard not to appreciate that. Dale Kim, associate of America's Most Wanted, Jeff Jarrett, obviously, this matchup as a result of AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels bringing Sorrell to the TNA as the neutralizer. And her opponent from Windsor, Ontario, Canada, Sorrelda! Some kind of a history we really thought never got it defined between these two. We know that Sorelda from Windsor, Ontario, Canada, and I know that there are going to be tons of people coming from Windsor into the U.S. to Detroit for Bound for Glory on October the 22nd. I know Gail Kim grew up in Canada as well. We don't know if their paths crossed at some point, but as a result of all that friction between the two tag teams, Sorelda brought in as the neutralizer, and now they're going to settle it once and for all. And they should. I mean, Sorelda was brought in for the distinct purpose of taking care of Gail Kim. And then these two have been battling it out ever since. Now you look at the two of them and you say, there's no way that Gail Kim size-wise can stand up to Sorelda. I mean, I'm not kidding, she's huge. She's powerful, look at the strength. Press slam, Gail Kim, high overhead, just dropped right down. This could end quickly if she gets a couple more of those in. But I will, oh, nice elbow too by Sorelda. But at one thing, if you see the pin attempt, Gail Kim is an athlete. Don't deny it, don't even think about it. Gail Kim is an athlete. And if she gets a chance to use her speed, she can neutralize Sorelda in a hurry. How many times has Gail Kim shocked us with moves, Don? Her of Kenranas, many other different things, DDTs we've seen as well. And uh-oh, Sorelda just had her neck snap back against that top rope. Well, we talked about Bound for Glory as it's gonna be coming up in October, and it's a whole weekend situation. I mean, you don't want to miss out Saturday, Sunday, Everything about Bound for Glory is it is fan interactive on the 22nd of October, but it's also the 21st. Drops right. the knee, hooks the leg, but only a two count. That's the key, Donna. Another pin attempt here by Gail Kim. Sorelda used her leg strength to power out. You write pay-per-view October 22nd, biggest in TNA history. Fan fest on the 21st. Fans coming not just from North America, not just from the U.S. and Canada, but all over the world. Remember the fan fest last year? Oh, unbelievably fun. Just the people we got to meet, the people from all over the world, New Zealand, Italy, Vancouver. We met people from the Philippines. I mean, Africa, South Africa. It was unbelievable where everybody came from, and that's the opportunity you get to be around your favorite wrestlers. Want to pass along word to you that that four-way tag team number one contenders match will not be going down tonight because of the fire that took place earlier. We are going to get with Jim Cornette. TNA management, and we'll see where we go with it from there. We'll have updates. You don't want to miss Impact. Never want to miss Impact, but we'll have all the word for you on the update of that match this week on Impact on Spike TV. Gail Kim in the driver's seat. Well, she did control, but she was a little nonchalant right there. And with somebody that strong like Sorrell is, you can't give them an inch because they'll take a mile. But again, this is what we're talking about with Gail Kim. Look at what she, she's got so many moves. Submission hold applied, but you see referee Andrew Thomas had to call for the break there because of the way she was using the ropes. Had her tied up there, spider style, tarantula style, and now Gail Kim from the middle rope, drops the leg right across the throat. Sorelda right now, just a little bit outmatched in the skill department, almost pinned. She's got to go with what's brown her here, and that's that strength. That's that superior strength that she's got on Gail Kim. Gail Kim, high risk this time, went for the high cross body block off the top, and Sorelda moved out of the way. That's what you gotta do, is get that momentum turned around, and obviously, Gail Kim took a bad fall, and now Sorelda's got it. Series of running clotheslines, missed with the third, but catches Gail Kim in mid-move, 
Look at the strength right here, and you can see it. Oh, breaks it right down on the mat. Front slam, One, another pin, two. and another near fall. Gail Kim, somehow resilient, able to get that shoulder up just in time. Shortcut by Gail Kim, breaking the eyes of Sorelda. Quick reversal, however, Gail Kim floats over or tries to until Sorelda puts on the brakes and brings her back out to the middle of the ring. But Gail Kim fighting through right there. Looked like Sorelda had her, and now she's got her arms draped over Sorelda's eyes. She it can't like, see. It looks, I thought it might have been a sleeper hold attempt. I couldn't tell because of the hair of Gail Kim, but I think right Oh, man, just snapped the neck back. Here's the pin. One, two, two. got it. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Gail Kim. Gail Kim gets the last word in this ongoing beef between her and Sorelda. Snaps the neck back and gains the victory with the one, two, three. Gail Kim victorious in the arena. Let's send it to the back. Jeremy Borash, I think he's standing by with Big Papa Pump. Good luck, JB. Yet to come tonight here at Hard Justice, the World Heavyweight title is on the line. Sting challenges Jeff Jarrett. Christian Cage going to be in Sting's corner tonight. And my guest at this time going to be in the corner of the World Heavyweight Champion, Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner. We heard Jeff Jarrett on Impact saying that if he did not walk away with the World Heavyweight title tonight, might as well pack his bags and leave TNA. Does that go for you as well? Jeremy, our track record speaks for itself. When everything's been online and we had to go for the gold, Jeff and I have always come out on top. Now, Sting, you made a big mistake, a fatal mistake when you picked Christian Cage as your partner. See, Jeff and I, we thought maybe he'd pick the ultimate warrior, some of his past, maybe his good buddy, Lex Luger, or even Goldberg. But he picked Christian Cage, a guy who says he can't understand a word I'm saying. Well, you see, I come from a highly educated university, so when I come out and speak to these white trash, I gotta dumb myself down. But apparently that wasn't stupid enough for Christian Cage. See, everybody knows American white trash is up here, and then Canadian white trash is way down here. So Christian Cage, I got a question for you. What's it like, Roman Earth, the lowest form of homo sapien there is? Now tonight, tonight, when Jeff Jarrett Beat Sting, they're going to be packing their bags. I am Senshi. I am the X Division Champion. Five men will compete to become the number one contender. And at Hard Justice, they will challenge me for my X Division Championship. The winner of this five-way X Division matchup gets a shot at Senshi and the X Division goal coming up August the 13th at Hard Justice. He's going to go high risk again and connects again off the top. Because of this young man's tremendous performance last week, Mr. Cornette has added Jay Lethal to the X Division title match this Sunday. Jay Lethal, young, gifted, ambitious, but inexperienced. Petey Williams, one thing you need to worry about is the Canadian Destroyer but it is of no concern to me. At Hard Justice, everyone in attendance will experience the way of the warrior, and the one who stands before me will experience the wrath of a warrior. You think you have what it takes? I dare you to take what's mine. Up next at Hard Justice, the X Division Championship at stake, the man in the middle, the champion Senshi. Two challengers, Jay Lethal and Petey Williams. And it is time for the X Division Championship matchup. It's the new era, the rebirth of the X Division on display. And let's break it down for you with the X Factors. X Division Champion Senshi promises to impose his will, inflict his punishment on two challengers. It's the Warriors' way or the highway. Petey Williams possesses one of the sickest and most devastating finishers in the business today, the Canadian Destroyer. The other challenger really opened the eyes of TNA management in a tough luck, hard fought loss to heavyweight champion Jeff Jarrett. Cornette so impressed, young Jay Lethal added to the mix. Ladies and gentlemen, the next contest at Hard Justice is a three-way X Division Championship match. Introducing challenger number one from Windsor, Ontario, Canada, Petey Williams. I like the new look for Petey Williams. No longer associated with the disbanded Team Canada, 
the man behind the Canadian Destroyer. He is on his own, and he's looking to regain the gold. Petey Williams, a former X Division champion, this is his opportunity to win back his title. Challenger number two is from Elizabeth, New Jersey, Trinco! Well, daily for earn this shot by the effort that he put on against the king of the mountain, Jeff Garrett. And then after Jeff Garrett and Scott Steiner almost physically injured him to not even be able to compete in the match that predetermined this, he gave it everything he had and still almost cut it out the win. I like what Jim Cornette did, bringing this win. And finally, the third participant in this contest, from Brooklyn, New York, he is the X Division Champion, Sin Shi! To many of you, Sin Shi is a new arrival in TNA. To those of you who have been following Total Nonstop Action since its inception, you'll know that, in essence here, he is one of the pioneers of the X Division. At one point, known as Low Key. He now has a new name, Senshi. It's Japanese for warrior. It's Japanese for soldier. And he has a mindset, Don, that is unlike any I've ever seen in the X Division. We're talking about a straight ahead style where he uses, especially his feet, this different martial arts style. It's unlike anything we've seen in the X Division. And check out that shot from, oh, all three men connecting here in the opening second. Well, you brought that up about Senshi. We remember how Joe came in and dominated the X Division because it was so different. And then, of course, it's not about weight limits in the X Division. But Senshi is so unique in his own right. He can kick you from anywhere in the ring. Keep your eyes on his feet if you can. But do not forget that Petey Williams, a former champion, somebody ready to, I, to establish a new identity now that he's left in Canada. It doesn't matter who you are. He hits the Canadian Destroyer. It's all over. Williams hit the spin kick after Lethal was sent out to the floor. Wow. Oh, and then slingshots out and snaps out the Hurricane Rana on this young kid from New Jersey, 20-year-old Jay Lethal, youngest member of the TNA roster. But, uh oh Look at this. Senshi. Look at this. Here he comes. All the way over the top. And he lands on his feet. Unbelievable. That's the martial arts that he has. I mean, that was something. You could see him coming at you in the background. Rolls over the top of their heads and lands on his feet. That was spectacular. Cartwheeled himself right over the top, and here comes Jay Lethal fighting back. Petey Williams trying to come back here on Lethal, who saw him from behind, doubled him over. He's going to try for a power bomb on the floor, but uh, Williams sits down instead and dropped the leg right across the throat. Petey Williams saw the opportunity and he took it, but you got to remember it's a three way match, and Sinji was in the ring waiting for it, and he just leveled him with one of those vicious kicks. Williams out on the floor, Sinji going to bring Lethal inside and try and put him away and stop this match and retain his title. Knife edge top rocks Lethal. Going to bring him back up to his feet and chop him once again right in the chest. I'll never forget Jay Lethal, sore neck and all. He must have done five diving headbutts off of the top rope. That shows you his courage and determination. And Jim Cornette saw that, knew he wasn't playing with a full deck, and gave him another chance. But Sinchi, this is a chance for him to make a real statement again. Not just beating one, but beating two opponents in the ring. And this is his opportunity to show everybody why he's the X Division champion. The Canadian Destroyer back on the oh, offensive. Look at that. What did you say just a second out ago? Of, out of the blue. Anywhere he wants, he can kick you. And he can spun around and nail it from behind. Kind of like you know, the Pele that, that AJ Styles does with, out of nowhere. Oh, but that's how you bring a man down, especially a man who uses his feet for a living. And Petey Williams did it. Now Lethal going to take advantage of a situation with Petey Williams thrilled with his own move there. Lethal instead shot off into the corner, springs back and caught nothing but canvas. That's exactly what happened. And you can see now as he suplexes him over at Petey Williams, this is an opportunity. Who bends that arm around his leg and now pulling back on the chin. You're right, he's got the leg. I mean, he's got his leg wrapped around the arm of Lethal and then cranking back on the neck with the chin lock, but that leaves himself wide open to these stiff kicks to the chest. Number three takes him over. Well, Petey Williams had the hold in and he couldn't let it go, but he had to be looking up at Sin Chi and realizing he was a sitting duck. And that's exactly what happened. And then Sin Chi walks right in. There's a, a shot flow right there by Jay Lethal, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Lethal fights back now. Shot off into the ropes, taken high up into the air, and Senshi elevates him and then catches him with both boots right in the gut. Senshi right now 
seems to have control, but look at Jay Lethal holding on and then look at Sinchi using Jay Lethal as a weapon, throwing him right into Petey Williams. Quickly speeding out of the way is Lethal, ducked under a clothesline, but then Petey Williams caught him with the boots right in the face. Earlier tonight at Hard Justice, Chris Saban victorious in the matchup against Alex Shelley, substituting for Kevin Nash. Chris Saban becomes the number one contender, and we would anticipate that Saban would face the winner of this matchup upcoming here in TNA. A little weird situation going out there in the ring. It's almost like Sin Chi and Petey Williams kind of working together right there. Kind of like, here, I'll take a few shots at Jay Lethal. Now you take a few shots at Jay Lethal. Very odd to see these two guys working together at this point. Maybe they figure eliminate him, and then the two of them go at it. Going to sing the Canadian National Anthem for us here. At the same time, you turn your back on Sin Chi. Lethal hung up in the corner, and there it is. There's the chop from the champ. The referee, obviously, Slick Johnson telling Sin Chi, hey, you know, to get in there and make this thing happen, and he did, and now Petey Williams realizes that whatever teamwork they were using together is over with. Nice elbow right there by Petey Williams. Right, forearm shot. There's that kick out of nowhere by Sinchi that doubles him over, and then he just hooks it right to the back of the head. It's like he's double jointed in the legs right there. It, it was, you know, it just like winds it up and then sends it home, man. It, the guy is just amazing what he can do with his feet. Oh, we've seen him go to the top, and oftentimes when he does, it means the Warriors' way, that double foot stop, and here comes Lethal to cut him off. Oh, that chop rocked him, hanging on for dear life as the champion, Senshi. Jay Lethal, somebody that's now got his second shot at a title. You can only give a man so many chances, and eventually they're going to get it. This is his. He knows how close he was against Jeff Jarrett. He's got to realize that he's got to use that experience and apply it in this match right here, but oh, no. Look at this. Since he's got his legs pinned with his feet, and then he comes after Petey and misses. Hook to the midsection by the Canadian Destroyer. Doubles over the champ, who immediately drops down so that Petey Williams is not able to take him over. Weakens him further, tries for the suplex. I think he caught him with a kick in mid-move, and there's that a dual drop kick by Lethal. Nice shot there by Jay Lethal. Yeah, he did. Since he hit him with that knee. Not just his feet, his knees are weapons. He caught Petey Williams right in the forehead with it, but Jay Lethal able to size them both up and knock them both down at the same time. One boot for Senshi, one boot for Petey Williams, and Lethal's feeling it. Crowd here at Hard Justice. Sounds to me like they're firmly behind this kick, Jay Lethal. Well, it's kind of like one of those people that they've watched grow up right here in front of them. He got his start right here to a lot of these TNA fans, the first time they've ever seen him. And they've been following along, and they know he's young, and they know he's talented. And it's just one of those guys that you just fall in love with if you're here in the impact zone on a regular basis. Lethal connects with the chop to Senshi, and then the elbow to Williams. Shot off into the ropes is the champ. High hip toss takeover for Senshi. Attention turned to Petey Williams. Scooping a slam, cartwheel up. Oh, and he caught him with another dual drop kick. Hey, he, uh, he realized that they were working against him two on one. So he's not taking any chances, he's trying to take them both out at the same time. Every chance that he gets. Senshi regroups. Now Lethal charges in, but moving out of the way is Williams. Kick by Senshi, kick by Lethal. Oh, look at this. Jay Lethal just, man, he's on fire right now as he's got the champion in the hole. And then he's got him in a bridge. Suplex two. Oh, bridging suplex for a near fall. And Jay Lethal just this close to becoming X Division champ for the first time. Petey Williams right now looks like he's trying to catch his breath, but throws him right back on the feet. And that Petey Williams, he's something. He can make a move out of nothing, and he just did it right there. Then connects with the side rush and leg sweep. If he goes for that reel him in, you know what that means, Don. It means the Canadian Destroyer, that sickest of all moves, the flip pile driver, could be on the way. If he hits you, it doesn't matter. And he's got Jay Lethal in it right here. Can he hit? Oh, Jay Lethal fights out. He's been there before. He doesn't want to be there again. Oh, look at this! Another bridging suplex! Oh, man, it was close. That is such a great move. He starts with the full Nelson. He drops down and then Germans him overhead right into the pitting predicament. Now, Senchi rocked with the chop. Here comes Lethal. Gonna take the champ and fire him across. Quick reversal. Lethal off into the rope, slides through. Gonna try for the roll up here, but since she went for that double foot stop, now it's Petey Williams with a chance for the pin in the near fall. Look at this roll up by Lethal! Everybody on the verge another. of victory. Sinchi now. Petey Williams going to try and break that up and get a pin of his own. Oh, he double foot stuff right off the top of Petey Williams. And here he goes. Two. He's got all Jay Lethal just in time. Couldn't move on Lethal's part because it was over.
Jay Lethal remains alive by breaking up that pin attempt by Senshi on Williams. The crowd just loves this new era of the X Division, this rebirth. Lethal gut wrenches him right over. The crowd's so happy that the way things worked out, they got to, didn't miss just put the one match up, and here they are now watching the X Division title on the line, and it's Jay Lethal and Petey Williams. A nice move right there, and he goes right for the leg. And now he goes for both of them. Uh-oh. Gonna set up here for the sharpshooter. Yes, he's got it set in, but you don't forget about Sid G. That's the problem when you go for a move like this. You expose yourself. You leave yourself wide open to that third man. Jay Lethal doing everything he can to sneak over, and you can see Petey Williams has got his eye on him. How soon will he let go? Oh, again, he goes over the top, and he comes back and kicks him in the back of the head. Oh, you're right, and then the pin, the lateral cover for a two count. Petey Williams barely gets the shoulder up. All three of these guys right now trying to figure out who's got an advantage because every one of them has had their moments, Mike. So close for all three of these guys. It's going to be one of those where they're going to catch one. That's how it's going to happen. Because these guys have no quit in them. Someone's going to get lucky and catch one. And look at Set G not letting up just blow after blow after blow. You're right. Rapid fire chops in the corner by Sen Chi. Able to sidestep him as lethal. Look at this. Look at oh! the three. Full Nelson released overhead. What a great move by Lethal. Gonna try and crawl on hands and knees and cover. Here's one, one. Here's two. two. Petey Williams just in time, and I mean by a split second did he break that up. Listen to the crowd, they're appreciating this as it goes on. They're seeing more and more Jay Lethal showing you what makes him so special. And here's his opportunity, he's gonna go up top, Mike. Could it be the diving dynamite move, emulating the dynamite kid with that top rope diving headbutt? Oh, we saw him do that five times. And oh, no reward there. Canadian Destroyer! Oh, he hits it! Oh, he hits it! This is his chance! And oh, but he forgot about Sin Chi, and he levels up with the Sin Chi covers two. two. Got it. Took advantage of it. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner and still X Division champion, Sin Chi. Petey Williams set it up. Petey Williams had the pin, but Sin Chi. That's what a champion's got to do. Take advantage of a situation, and Sin Chi did. You're not kidding, he did. Petey Williams hit the Canadian Destroyer. At that point, I think we all thought that we were going to have a new champ. The former champ, Petey Williams, and there you see it, Petey motioning that, that that should be my title. But Senshi watched, waited, caught Petey with the kick. i tell you what, I'd like to see this again if we could, see how this happened. I don't you want to go away from this live in here for just one second until we see this, but I agree, Don. i got to see this again. Then she's got the goal. He's walking out with a belt and he earned it. Here's how. There's the Canadian Destroyer. Now you're thinking to yourself, Petey Williams has got to make the pin quick because Cinchy kind of hiding behind the ref. And now it's too late and there's the drop kick. And Cinchy had Jay Lethal all himself. There's the three count from Slick Johnson and Cinchy regains the goal. He remains X Division Champion. Petey Williams just a case of bad luck for the Canadian Destroyer. The tag team title matchup, it's up next. We're gonna send you to Jeremy Borash. He's standing by with the challengers, Conan and the Latin American Exchange. Coming up next here at Hard Justice, the world tag team titles are on the line. Conan, you lead your Latin American Exchange into battle. Hernandez and Homicide tonight challenge AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels for the world tag team titles. Tonight, the era of LAX violence continues. You can stop a revolutionary, but you cannot stop a revolution. AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels, you two have been hand-picked champions by this company, and you have been afforded luxuries and privileges just like this white boy gringo nation that we can only dream about. But we're not going to sit around or stand around anymore. More. We're gonna take what's ours because you put us in a predicament where we've had to fight for everything and struggle for everything. But tonight, we're gonna fight with that passion and ferocity, thinking of only one thing, getting back of our, at you gringos that have done these things to our Latino nation. Hoy, esos campeonatos regresan a la nación latina. Orale, arriba la raza! Hell yeah, sir. For years and years, the gringos and white boys, this society has taken from us. You've stolen our land, our territory. You've tried to enslave our people. You've tried to humiliate us. But now, we're representing todos those Latinos that are here in the United States. My suggestion to you is learn Spanish. Aprendan a hablar español. 
because from here on out, we're gonna start taking things. You see, the way we started, grinding on the block, we had the fight for everything. We came to TNA and we keep fighting for stuff. 5150, that's police code for mentally insane, loco en la cabeza. And that's what we are. We're crazy, we're Latin, we're proud, we're all over. AJ Styles and Chris Daniels, you too have been coddled to. You too have been catered to. Your poster boys for this company. You've been ducking us. You guys have been privileged since you got into this company. They spoof fed you everything. Here's your contract, right here. Yo, am I supposed to read that from here? We're gonna be all over you like a monkey on a cupcake. And here they go! He just folded up like an accordion. Oh, look at this. He's got his blood. He's signing it in his blood. He's signing the contract in Daniel's own blood. Oh, what a statement they're making right now. That's sick. Get this. The Corral of Sotro. This is the LEX. And the Lucha Libre. Lucha. What's wrong? What's going on? Get that out of the Corral of Sotro. LEX taking over. This revolution will be televised. Nuevamente llega esa cesta. Celdo de Edgar. La monta con la clave a fe, conté no te caigas cuando mi flow roque el bote porque cabemos todos papi, vamos a ayudar con esto, me estoy cumpliendo y el mundo se está gastando, me estoy cumpliendo, mañana ahora estás seguro y el dinero no es que te lo he hecho, que vale más, 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 You try and kill this oh, Ringo. The next time I see you, I'm gonna put you in the hospital. 187 on you, bitch. Conan's Latin American Exchange has a chance to further their quote unquote era of violence. They're the challengers, and the champs are Daniels and Styles. It is time for the second of our three championship matchups tonight at Hard Justice. The NWA Tag Team Gold is at stake. It's time to go to the taglines and break it down. When the champs, Styles and Daniels, realize just how deep the competition is, they signed a stack of open deals to prove their superiority among the tag team ranks. A gang-style beatdown by the LAX, a dual purpose. They force their hand to get a title shot and they weak into the champs. No denying that just like their Hispanic countrymen, their presence is being felt everywhere you look. Homicide and Hernandez in the ring, Conan in the corner, and even Moody Jack at the broadcast table. They say no, you gringo, this is gonna be Spanish only, so you better learn it, and you better like it! Atravesando la frontera viene, los próximos campeones mundiales de la era de Latin America Exchange! Done? I'll tell you what, these guys have set this thing up, but you see Kodak coming over here and giving us the old gunshot sign, it looked like. Oh, that's a, that's a great welcome, isn't it? After, after he busted us here at the table recently on Impact. They always said they don't get equal opportunity, Mike, so they're getting the foot up. Chance to take the era of violence to a completely new level. You heard what Conan said earlier. You can stop a revolutionary, but you can't stop a revolution. And ladies and gentlemen, their opponents are the defending NWA Tag Team Champions of the World, the phenomenal AJ Styles and the Pawn Angel, Christopher Daniels. You think the champs have revenge on their mind? They've been flooded up. I mean, when you look at every time I see that, that video of AJ Styles taking the Green Day Killer, I grin. It hurts to watch. And we saw AJ with the neck brace. He's ready to go tonight. You see the fallen angel. These guys may be two of the best that have ever graced the ring. But I'm going to tell you something. The Latin American game, not in And how about that intimidation factor from the challengers? 
They intimidate every person in this building without question. They've got Conan in their corner. They've got the gringo killer from Homicide. And of course, Fernandez with the outright strength and power among the strongest of anyone in TNA. Styles, Dan, and Don have to remain totally focused on the task at hand. They can't let that thought in their minds of, of outright revenge and payback override the fact that, number one, they've got to keep the tag team title. Well, I'll tell you something else that AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels are going to have to deal with, and that's Conan at ringside. He's there, and you can't forget about him for one second, and we know that he'll take a cheap shot every chance that he gets. But these guys are champs, and they want to win this match any way that they can. And don't be surprised if you see shortcuts taken by Styles and Daniels because you know LAX is going to take them. you got to fight fire with fire in a match like this. You know, I was going to use that cliche, but after what went down here earlier tonight, I guess you're to right. Say the word. I guess you're right. If you're, you've got to fight fire with fire tonight in Hard Justice. And here we go. Look at the power. Look at the strength of Hernandez. You know, wrestling in Mexico for the past several years. A seven-year pro. Six feet two. 275 pounds. Able to toss Daniels over. But he lands on his feet and goes right back to the side headlock. He's so strong. I mean, we've seen him with that corner toss. And, and the, the rumor is the reason that, that move was even better is that's, that's how he got his people over the river. But I'm telling you, the guy is so strong. I mean, I was looking at numbers that you had earlier about what this guy could bench. He benches 540. He squats 800. Here to specialty, though, is the deadlift. Somewhere around between 7 and 750. And that's one way to, to counteract that strength. Take out the big man's legs. And Daniels caught him first with the drop kick. And takes him over with the head scissors. He's got Hernandez. Oh, on the defensive and a great charging knee. Takes him out to the floor. Just kicks him right out of the ring. And that's a way to make a statement. That's a way to let LAX know, look, ah, we're the champions. We have held more belts between the two of us than you guys will ever see. And there you see Homicide trying to come in and referee. Let him know he's not legal. He can't get in, and you got to give Andrew Thomas credit for trying to keep order. I don't know if he's going to be able to keep it in this match, though, but I give him credit for trying right now. Homicide and Daniels to square off, and you know AJ would love to get in the ring, and he asked for the tag, and yeah, the fallen angel gets Styles the tag, and here we go. You have to wonder, though, how good is AJ Styles' neck? We know how bad it was hurt. We know how vicious that green go killer is, but AJ Styles doesn't show any effects on it right now. Great exchange here. Styles momentarily gets the better of it before homicide. Oh, yeah. Shortcut. Cut him with the fist. Elbows with the back of the head. AJ takes him over with the arm drag and then rocks him with the right hand of his own. Homicide, though, is just a street fighter. He's a gangster. He's a thug. I mean, you're not going to hurt him by punching him. And as you can see, the blows just going one after another. Both of them just trading him back and forth. AJ Styles is going to have to do things that he, he does. Catch him in moments when people aren't expecting it and try to get the pin that way because we know how much a fighter Homicide is. Homicide bum rush Styles into the corner, but AJ able to turn it around on him and then reels off those right hands. That last one caught him flush right at the top of the head. Off into the ropes, AJ able to leapfrog Homicide. Oh, oh man, how about that? You just call Homicide a thug, a street fighter. He might have hurt you. He just pulled out the wrestling playbook for you right there as you check out the leader of the Latin American exchange, Conan, circling the ring. Well, AJ Styles with a little hit with that right there. It comes right back, and he's here, and coming in. But yeah, you're right. Don't be fooled by Homicide. He may be a thug, but he can also wrestle. But so can these guys together. Double team move. Daniels comes off the top and just overpowers Hernandez right down to the mat. Homicide from behind. AJ saw him coming. And there goes Hernandez into the steel wall. Styles tries for the pin, but barely gets a one count on Homicide. Trying to keep up with the action right here, folks. We're trying to keep you up with who's legal and who's not. You see the 5150 on the back of Homicide. Nick, what's the actual, what's the actual terminology, Mike, that, that stands for? Police code for mentally insane. And they're proud of it. Gotta be mentally insane to do some of the things that these guys do in that ring. I mean, it's just unbelievable how they put their bodies on the line. But right now, Christopher Daniels, AJ Styles in total control, not intimidated at all, not letting LAX get inside their head at all right now. Double team moved by the champs enabled them to take control of this title bout. Beat down on Homicide in the corner. You saw Daniels there kick the referee out of place, sending him over to check on Homicide. Tag in, legal. Styles now the legal man. And let's watch the champs win. Homicide, oh, they went for that double hip toss. He tried to fight it off. Instead, they're going to double powerbomb him down. 
Homicide gave it everything he had right there. And then look at the knee. Flying knee right there by AJ Styles as he catches him right behind in this. I like the way he just manhandled him and goes for the pin. Good call by referee Thomas, maintaining order and understanding that Styles was the legal man after the tag and sending Daniels back out to the apron. Homicide tries to fight back from his knees and gets back up to the vertical base, and then just took Styles, tossed him out to the apron right by Hernandez. AJ just kind of fighting, like we said earlier, going after him the same way that they would him. Fighting, throwing a lot of punches, ah. and look at that. Homicide had a trap between the ropes and took advantage of it. Almost got the pin. Oh, man, AJ was in no man's land. See that neck breaker? Yeah. Var variation of it by Homicide that just, oh, just twisted and contorted Styles' body and neck at the same time. You know, it's, you brought such a good point earlier about the ability that Homicide has in the ring. And don't forget Hernandez. He uses that strength to perfection when he gets a hold of you. I mean, he could just manhandle you. And here he is. He's a little not so off, though, right there. You can't go that way if you want to win the goal. 275 pounds of Hernandez crashing into Styles. You're right, nonchalant cover on the pin attempt. But the challengers now have turned it around. After the flurry by Styles and Daniels, they go to the big man to try and maintain it and, and get LAX back in the picture. Homicide avoids the kick. Look out. Oh, the strength of Hernandez right there. He just lets it right over his head like it's nothing. Half Nelson released overhead and then the pin and again. For someone who's 275 pounds, you get to get in closer on that pin attempt. Use your weight to get right on top of your opponent and pull them down for the three count. It's almost like it's a game plan of sorts because you, it's almost like they want to torture them. They just want to beat them down, not just beat them. They want to let the whole world know that they're dominant together as a tag team. Shouldn't be a surprise with a team like the Latin American Exchange who thrives on the gang style violence would have a strategy and would have a game plan like that, especially when you factor in the brains of the operation Conan. And just grinding it right there as all of a sudden you can see AJ Styles, you can see the pain as he's trying to catch his breath. He's reaching out as Homicide not letting up at all. Just grabbing the chin. You gotta fight dirty right now, AJ, if you want to get out of that hole. He is back up to his feet, trying to rifle off those elbows, but Homicide tosses him out to the well, he tried to toss him to the floor, but AJ, oh, able to hook onto the ropes and then drops down. Caught Homicide unawares, and Hernandez has got the foot of AJ Hook. And that gives Homicide a chance to get over there and get a quick shot in right now. And wait a minute, here goes Homicide. And where does he go? He went through! He spun through the ropes! and lands on AJ right into the rail. Oh my gosh, I don't know if we can see that again. If it's possible, watching him spin through the ropes. Look at this. Ask and you shall receive. What a landing. I just think you've got to get your body perfectly placed to do that. Combination suicide flip dive, and you know that Conan was going to get involved here at some point. Check out the beatdown on AJ. Well, the referee's distracted, and he's trying now. Fallen Angel realizes he's trying to get in there to help AJ, and Hernandez and then he just beat up on AJ and fling him back into the ring. Styles in trouble. Here's the homicide cover. Here's, and you can't blame Daniels. After everything that just went down there, Daniels knew that he had to get in there and make the save. Homicide scissors the leg of Styles so that he's not able to get to his side of the ring. You have that five count before you break, and he really will exploit that. Hernandez. Again, another pin attempt, and again, another near fall. And again, he's a little nonchalant on that. I, mean, I know how strong he is, but AJ Styles, is a, this guy's held every single belt more than once in this company, every belt more than once. So and you better be a little bit more aggressive when you go for the pin. Something that you can't say about any other wrestler in the four plus year history of TNA. Triple crown, AJ Styles, he's been NWA World Heavyweight Champion, X Division title holder, and right now he is once again, one half of the NWA World Tag Team Champs and LAX. Back to the basics here of tag team strategy. Going to cut off the ring, going to keep AJ on their side, and just continue the beat down, and at the same time, keep Daniels out of the match. Right there, you see Homicide grabbing on the ears of AJ and pulling him up, and you can see he's laughing. He can feel the weight losing, leaving AJ Styles. He can feel the strength leaving AJ Styles. AJ now just trying to hook on to anything he can. But look at AJ. That's what he does. He launches into thinking he's out of it. And then he uses his strength and throws him right on the ropes and takes the air right out of Homicide. Front suplex by Styles. Hangs Homicide out across that top. Homicide down, Styles down. You know, AJ going to do everything within his power to get to the opposite side of the ring, and Hernandez going to try and cut him off. AJ caught him with the kick, and then dives through and gets the tag.
Dragon Daniels was legal. That's the experience of AJ Styles. A lot of people would go after one more shot and somebody like Hernandez, not AJ. He knew it was time for the fallen angel to take over because he's rested and ready and look at him go after both of them at the same time. Double team move works to perfection. Talk about a fired up fallen angel. That's what you're seeing. Daniels takes homicide, scooping a slam, split leg, moonsault, crash down, 10, two, go. Oh, so close, homicide, the fight's out of it. Then goes out of the ring trying to catch his breath, but you can't forget about Hernandez. And if a guy with that strength right there gets a hold of him, but look at the fallen angel. Fight with a vicious elbow. Elevated, though, by Hernandez. Daniels pulls him down. Then the back kick for Homicide. Gonna go split-legged outside this time. He saw Homicide right there. He figured this is my opportunity. Because Homicide's gonna think I'm gonna go the other way. But that's how makes Daniels great. He comes right after Homicide and levels him. Here comes Hernandez, and he just put the shoulder right into Daniels. The second, the fallen angel got up to the apron. Hernandez was ready for him to look Oh, out. no, here he goes. He goes over the top, takes out his old man with Daniels, and then stands up and shows you how strong and ready he is. Let's take another look. Keep in mind, this is 6 feet 2, 275 pounds coming at you. Look at Hernandez, man. He cleared that by five feet. You don't realize his athleticism. I was just going to say, it isn't all about oh, 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 AJ. Unbelievable flip. What can you say about that? AJ springboard up. Here it is again. Look at this from the lights. Just unbelievable. And again, he takes out his own partner too, but that's the part of a casualty of war right there. He just takes out a few out with him. They think that this is a dream team, and they're right on here at Hard Justice. You, this crowd. You're damn right, it's awesome. Face no. plant, pin him, AJ One, cover, two. two. Oh, he knew it. He, he felt Hernandez coming up right there. He saw Homicide was going to get out of it. And AJ, as smart as he was, got in position so that Hernandez couldn't blindside him. Daniels has Homicide up. AJ spring, springs into the crossbody. One, One two. two. Oh, Hernandez just in time. Damn, Homicide just able to use Hernandez is saved to stay alive in this matchup. Uh-oh, look at this. LAX gonna go double team. That's how quickly he can change. Bulldog from the shoulders. Hernandez goes for the pin. Two. Oh, you saw Homicide celebrating too soon as AJ slides in and saves it. They thought they had the belts. They thought they were gonna win the titles, but they came close, but not that time. We're still at it here in the tag title match. Homicide, DDT attempt out of the corner, but AJ holds on. But he better watch out because Hernandez is getting to his feet behind him. You can't concentrate too long on one person. You've got to get the job done. Hernandez trying to catch his breath. Homicide AJ. caught. Yep, AJ tries to suplex him. A weary Hernandez is regrouped, ready for the tower. Wow, both of them go flying over. Homicide may have taken the worst of that line. Power bomb from underneath, now Daniels off the top. Cracker Jack, right over the back of his head. Unbelievable, the strength of this man. He just grabbed him by the neck and head and just slung him over. Oh, this could be the difference maker. We could have new tag champs. Oh, AJ out of nowhere with the kick. Right to the back of the head, and here goes AJ. Going for that inverted DD, and he hits it. Spring back, here's the cover. Uh, two. two. Oh. Again. Now he goes right after Homicide, and Homicide gets it back on AJ. AJ went for the pin, and I think out of the corner of his eye, he saw Homicide getting up. As soon as the camera panned back, we figured it out. Oh, Homicide just took down Daniel. And that's what happens with guys like LAF. They get you so many times, but if you're not paying attention, and you know the damage that a gringo killer and a Cracker Jack and a Blur Toss can do to you, that's why you've got to be attentive to everything that's going on, like AJ is, and look at the body sprawled out. You're not kidding. All four men inside the six-sided ring and all four down at the moment. First up, AJ to a knee. Hernandez back up as well. And Hernandez misses the Oh, call. we missed it, but it was the Pele. He caught him with it, and then you see the knee from Daniels as he takes him out. And then Homicide takes AJ out. Homicide shot off by Daniels. Fallen Angel. Homicide trying to fight him off. Oh, Planet. He just overpowered it. Watch AJ go wide for AJ. Conan up on the apron to cut him off. Damn it. Just crotched him right there on the top row. And look at the fallen angel go after Conan, but you can't forget about Hernandez. There goes 
Daniels face first into the corner, courtesy of Hernandez. LAX right back in control. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. Gringo kill up for AJ. Ah, oh, he landed on his feet. And as he was for the quarter toss, AJ throws homicide into Hernandez. And now they double team Hernandez. High low. Two. Yes. They got it. Ladies and gentlemen, your winners and still NWA World Tag Team Champions, the phenomenal AJ Styles and the Fallen Angel, Christopher Daniels. Oh, this crowd saw tag team men like they paid to see, and I'm telling you what, it was as good as advertised. They caught him high, they caught him low. Yeah, it was a double team move, but they'll take advantage of that, and they'll keep the goal. But what an effort by the challengers, the Latin American exchange. Oh, it's hard to say anything bad about LAX after the effort that they put on right now. Oh wow. boy, if you think it's been hot tonight, and it has been, where do you check out next month? No surrender, baby. And we are back live at the Hard Justice pay-per-view in anticipation of our main event. Quite honestly, it's been the most unforgettable night in the four-year history of TNA and DW. We've got the main event yet to come, and I know you got something to say. Well, think about it. Everything that we've gone through tonight, and then to see match after match after match, as high quality as they've been, and we've got Sting and the King of the Mountain for the World Championship next. It's been a great night. Everything that's happened, we'll always talk about it, but what a great night it's been. It's been a tribute to everyone here, to everyone in the locker room. What a great night it's been for, for TNA. Main event is next. It's Sting's opportunity to eliminate Jarrett, win the NWA World's title. We know that Jeff Jarrett is gonna have Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner in his corner. Christian Cage went to Jim Cornette. He volunteered. He said, I want to be in Sting's corner. I want to even that playing field. They worked out an agreement. Let's send it to the back in anticipation of this big world's title match where JB is standing by with Christian Cage. All right, guys, thank you very much. Backstage here with Christian Cage, about to accompany Sting to the ring tonight in the main event for the world heavyweight title. First things first, JB, did, did Jeff Jarrett sink to an all-time low? Did he... Did he try to set the building on fire to get out of this match tonight? That's what I want to know. Jeffy boy, we got Orlando's finest on the job. You ain't going nowhere, bitch. You're losing that title tonight. Scott Steiner, I heard you out here before mumbling, talking about how you're university educated, how you're so much smarter than, well, apparently everybody. I got three words for you, Scotty. Buy a freaking vowel. You're out here talking and you're always walking around. You're so much bigger than everybody else. You got big biceps. You wear a stupid head chain. You want to impress me? Why don't you try winning a fight once in a while, Scott? Maybe then I'll sweat you. But I ain't sweating you tonight, Scotty. And I ain't sweating Jeff Jarrett. Because tonight is the night that I ensure with everything that I am that Sting becomes the NWA world heavyweight champion because he deserves it. He deserves it more than anybody for the sacrifices that he's made for this business, for his family, for the wrestlers in the back, but mostly for me. It's time to cut the cancer at a TNA. Jeff Jarrett, you're in this thing. You want to be the champion for the wrong reasons, for selfish, self-serving reasons. Sting and I, on the other hand, we're in it for the future, for the success of TNA. So it's like this. Tonight, there will be a new era in TNA. And trust me when I say that. Because... It's showtime, folks. July 16th, Victory Road, Sting's quest to remove Jeff Jarrett from TNA. But adversity introduces a man to himself. Oh, what the hell minute. is this? I thought that was one of the cameramen. Cameraman, my ass! Sting would return to the match and astound the world. Now, he has a second chance to accomplish his goal. You got your neutralizer, Scotty Steiner? 
I got my neutralizer, Christian Cage. The good news is we're on level playing ground now, Jeff. Remember I said it before, that's why we play the game. And I promise you, Jeff, I'm going to have my game face on at hard justice. All of life's battles teach us something. The eight month culmination of Sting's quest comes to an end Sunday. And I will remain the king of the mountain. Now, after an eight month journey that saw much hardship and success, the legend known as Sting is finally set to fulfill his destiny. For Sting, it may be showtime. For me, it's showdown. There will be no anesthesiologist for you, Jeff. You will not be able to sleep through this surgery, Jeff! I'm going to remove you, and it's going to be ugly. We've been waiting for eight months. Anticipation level at an all-time high. The main event, it's up next. It's Sting challenging Jeff Jarrett for the gold. Back inside the impact zone and time for our NWA World Heavyweight Championship matchup. It's Sting, it's Jeff Jarrett. Let's go to the tail of the tape. Let's break down the numbers game. You recognize the slight size advantage for the challenger Sting, but you also realize that the champion Jarrett has finally met its match when it comes to the all-important experience factor. Let's look at the bullet points. Last month at Victory Road, Sting prevailed against insurmountable odds. Jarrett's sneak attack that blinded him and outlasting three other opponents. When it became obvious that Jarrett would have Scott Steiner in his corner, Sting agreed to Christian Cage's offer to watch his back. For months, Sting has made his plan crystal clear. Eliminate Jarrett and TNA thrives. Tonight, that opportunity comes with a bonus incentive, the NWA Heavyweight Championship. being on fire that was nothing earlier this place is going crazy every single person on their feet this is what they've waited for from the moment seeing joy dna you know they've had it in the back of their mind win with the world championship be on the line well it is and look at him and sting milking it in and this crowd they can eat him alive it's been eight months in the making and this is it. This is Sting's opportunity. Can we relive history? Can we go back to July 1990 when Sting defeated Ric Flair? Yes, to become NWA World Heavyweight Champion. Will history repeat itself? It's time to find out, ladies and gentlemen. is scheduled for one fall and is your hard justice main event of the evening for the NWA Heavyweight Championship of the World. When the bell rings, the man in charge, TNA official, Mr. Rudy Charles. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, live from Orlando, Florida, it's time for your main event of the evening. Introducing, first of all, the challenger. He is seconded to the ring tonight by Christian Cage. He weighed in this morning at 252 pounds and is the number one contender for the NWA Heavyweight Championship of the World from Venice Beach, California. This is Steve. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing, seconded to the ring tonight by Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner. He weighed in this morning at 235 pounds and is the current reigning and defending NWA heavyweight champion of the world. He is the king of the mountain. This is Jeff Jarrett. You mentioned it earlier, the emotional involvement of the capacity crowd on hand here at Hard Justice. The roar for Sting in anticipation of possibly a new NWA World Heavyweight Champion, and then the cascade of boos that almost drowned out Borash's introduction of the defending title holder, Jeff Jarrett. Rudy Charles is going to be the referee in this matchup, and if you'll notice, they brought out Andrew Thomas, and they brought out Slick Johnson just to keep everybody apart so that they could get this match started right. It has that big match feel as well as it should with the NWA World Heavyweight Championship at stake. You see senior official referee Rudy Charles motioning for Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner. The second for the champ, Jeff Jarrett, back down to the floor. Christian Cage does as well for Sting. He's trying to make sure everybody's out of the way before he starts this bell. And Keep you can see Jarrett ready to roll. Rudy Charles maintaining order, and here we go! The bell sounds eight months in the making. Jeff Jarrett and Sting, NWA heavyweight title. Let's be honest, both men have agreed on one thing and one thing only. That's that there's not room in TNA for both of these individuals. Oh, that has been so obvious as of late, especially. And look at Sting right Whoa. now, going for a quick advantage. And Jeff Jarrett going right for the rope, trying to get out of the way, and then takes a cheap shot and slaps Sting. But look at him, he's got him right by the neck and slams him down. Look at this for the Scorpion. Twice in the opening minute of this matchup, and Jarrett trying to fight it off. I don't know if Sting has Jarrett sufficiently weakened, well, obviously he doesn't because Jarrett is able to make his way to the ring ropes and get the break. He's talked so much about cutting the cancer out right there, and he wanted to cut it out quickly. Going right forward, as you see Jarrett trying to get himself Whoa, set up. God, look oh, out right, right here. here at the table. Just do it right Jesus. over. Jarrett not paying attention. And Sting, and folks, we're going to do our best to cover this. Sting just unbelievably comes right over after him. Oh, catches him with the fan. The fan right off the table and smashes him right into the face. Oh. That's the fan right off of the thing. And he sting one another right now. It wasn't a wrestling fan. It was the contraption that keeps us cool down. There goes Jarrett right into the crowd, courtesy of Sting. He just tossed him over the guardrail. Keep your eyes on Big Papa Pump, Scott Steiner, and Christian Cage. Both going to try and follow up with all four now. Going to battle out here in the crowd. Let's try and get it back together here at the table if we can. The way our headsets are set up right now, we're stuck to the yeah. table. And I was afraid that we weren't going to be able to call this thing. And Sting, just the confidence he's brewing as he goes into the crowd where he knows he's the favorite. Oh. There goes Jarrett, face first, right into the wall. Sting just methodical right now in his game plan. Just going right after him. Every little shot he can. And he picks him up and right on the rail right there. And it looks like Jeff Jarrett caught the, I don't know, the collarbone or what he caught on the top of the rail. But he immediately grimaces in pain. Battling in the crowd. And I think at this point, Rudy Charles really needs to take everything into account here. 
take into account the importance of this matchup. Have a little levity, have a little leeway, Don, when it comes to following the rules with these two, because we want to settle. I'll tell you what, this crowd, they got to see everything happen up in there with them tonight. As you saw that brawl earlier, now Sting goes right in there. I saw Christian Cage, and you see Big Papa Pump, Scott Steiner, both of them hanging around. And if they get an opportunity to take a cheap shot, you know Big Papa Pump will do it. Sting says, let's clear the way. Grabs Jarrett by the hair, by the head. Going to take him up to the top of the arena. Oh, the right hand just decked him. I mean, Sting is just in total control from the very beginning. Taunting him. He's taunting him with the fans. And look at that. And the fans loving every bit of it. It's just one punch after another. Did you feel the confidence oozing from Sting Dot when he took Jarrett here at the broadcast table? He turned, he had a comment for you. You could just sense that the confidence level of Sting is at an all-time high. Oh, it's got to be right now. And you can see everything's going the way he wanted it. Look at this. You see the towel from the fans covering the face and just anything he wants, he throws it up there to Christian. I mean, whatever game plan they put together, it is absolutely working to perfection. Again, Sting says, let's clear out the fans, and there goes Jared again, head first. And what a way to demoralize the king of the mountain, not only beating him up, but beating him up amongst the people. Challenger in total control. Jared, you up. Down but not out because the champ's going to try and get back up to his feet and Sting's going to bring him back towards the ring. I can't go help to keep my eye on Tristan Cage and Big Papa Pump as they're always right around. Every of you'll look, they'll pop in the picture any second there. There you see Big Papa Pump and there you see Christian coming over. They're making sure they're right by there if things get out of hand because they know how quickly it can change. Uh oh, uh -oh. I don't, I don't know. Back, here again. Okay. back over here by the table and instead Sting Tosses the champ Jarrett in the ring. Now Sting's been distracted by Scott Steiner. Rudy Charles tells Big Papa Pump, sit down in the chair. I mean, you got to give Rudy credit here. He's doing everything within his power to maintain order. Watch Sting. Going to go high risk here. Steiner. Steiner's got a chair. Steiner's got the steel chair. Oh, he catches him right there in the leg as the referee was going over with the Christian Cage to get him on that side, and he didn't see it. He but took Steve out his took knee. The, oh, he did. He cracked him right he, in the he knee. He took out his knee, Don. And, ah! He just took Christian Cage overhead, belly to belly, suplex by Steiner. The two seconds battle. Well, advantage goes to Scott Steiner right there. Christian Cage saw what Steiner did. He came over to try to make a difference, and Scott Steiner just overhead, belly to belly. You mentioned make a difference. That's what Scott Steiner did. The steel chair shot to the knee of Sting enables Jeff Jarrett to take control and take advantage of this situation. And then he just sweeps the leg right there. You saw Jeff Jarrett going right after the same knee. And that's how Jeff Jarrett always seems to get an advantage. You've got a one-legged challenger in this matchup. And Jarrett just continues to stomp and stomp repeatedly right directly on that already injured knee. Now going to stake it out. He's going to cannonball down. And he is just relentless how he's going after the knee. One shot after another. There's another shot on it. Think about this. You take out Sting's knee. It makes the Scorpion less effective, but it also enables Jarrett to weaken him for the figure four. Great point. Because it takes so much of your leg strength to lock that in. And look at Jeff Jarrett. I mean, he is not even letting up. Going right after it. One shot after another. Now slamming it down on the net, picking it up. I'll tell you what, if he keeps this up, I don't know that Sting will be able to go on. And you can see Sting writhing in pain. Oh, man. And you can sense here that, that Jarrett just smells the blood. That he feels that he can put Sting away after that interference by Steiner. And here it comes. Figure four, and sits back with it, oh, there it is. Oh, man, you can see as soon as he pulled back on that leg, I mean, Steve came up like a rocket right there as the paint is excruciating right now. Figure four leg lock applied by the champ, and Sting got a dig down so deep here. The fans are firmly behind him as his shoulders were down for a two count. Well, Jeff Jarrett seems like nothing more than an end of this play right now, so they can brag on the fact that Sting couldn't even stay in this match, and he had to tap out. And Jarrett pulling back on it with everything he's got. Sting just, he's just trying to block out the pain. I don't know that he can. Jarrett continues to just maintain that figure four. Submission hold. Sting trying to just fight through the pain. And at the same time, he's going to try and get momentum on his side if he can turn Jarrett over here. Look at that. Now Jarrett just slapping him, slapping him. Sometimes, though, that can backfire. 
that can just drive the anger level. But again, he applies the pressure on that leg. Was that open hand slap? Was that the wake up call for Sting who, he turned him over. He got it turned over right there and then you see Jeff Jarrett already grabbing the rope to break it. The champ is up and the challenger on one leg just gets caught by the right hand on the side of the head. Jarrett quickly bounces off the rope. Sting caught him and rocked him with the right. Sting with another. He blocks the Jarrett punches and he caught him backhand punch that time and a big right hand to the jaw. You got to wonder about the force though behind Sting's blows without that weight on that leg at full force. But it looks like he's coming through okay right now as he's just not letting up. Out of the corner, there goes Jarrett. Stinger splash on the way. Oh, Jarrett moved out of the way. And again, I think that may have been the fact that he just didn't have the speed to come off those ropes like he wanted. And now going for the stroke. Oh, but Sting turns it. One, two. two. Wait a minute. Oh, oh come on. Scott Snyder pulled Rudy Charles out of the ring. Oh, here comes Christian Cage. Oh, you can see this, Christian Cage. Every time Scott Snyder goes down it, Christian Cage's not going to put up with it. And now he's grabbing the chair. Oh man, Rudy Charles doing what he can. Wait a minute. Is that, he's kicking him out. What? What are you going to do, Rudy? I swear, as Jeff Jarrett just got his knees up on Sting in the ring, I swear he just kicked Christian Cage out, I think. Wait a minute. Scott Steiner just picked up the title belt from our table. Scott Steiner took the championship belt and tossed it into Jarrett. I think Rudy Charles saw it, though. Well, you can see Rudy Charles, he sent Christian Cage back to his corner. Oh, no. Oh, no. Jarrett's measuring Sting, waiting for him to get to his feet. He's got the title belt in his hands. Oh, look at right there, though. Christian Cage able to come through, and he throws the belt right there to Sting. Tossed it back in, and now Sting's got the belt. He just knocked out Jarrett. Oh, you can see right now Rudy Charles, and he's in an argument right here in front of us with Big Papa Pump. And he's trying oh. to do some kind of order right there. Pin, here's one, two, oh, took too late if he got his leg up on the rope. You just saw a prime example of why Sting decided to take Christian Cage up on his offer. You have to have someone out here to neutralize Scott Steiner. I'll tell you what, I gotta give it to Rudy Charles. He's somehow able to keep this thing in order somewhat. Uh-oh, Steiner chair shot, look out! Oh, right into the back, and he used the body of Sting to shield him. So the referee, Rudy Charles, didn't see it. You see Sting's landing, headbutt to the groin of the champ, and both champ and challenger are down. Christian Cage slides in, Steiner as well. Well, he sees Big Papa Pump trying to grab that chair, and you see the shortcut there. That's Christian Cage, and they go at it. Christian unloads on Big Papa Pump, putting the boots to Scott Steiner in the corner. Look at this, Big Papa Pump now grabbing on the arm of the referee, and wait a minute, you see Get there's him. the chair. Christian's got the steel chair. He's measuring it up. Scott Steiner and, and he levels out. Knockout shot, Jarrett's knocked out. Cover him, Sting, cover him and win the title. Jeff Jarrett absolutely walked out. Rudy Charles did right there. He threatened him earlier. He said, I'll send you to the back, and I think this time he's gonna follow through on his word. He is sending him out, you're right, Mike. He is, it is official. He is sending Christian Cage out of the building. He's kicking him out. Oh, this is ridiculous. How can you do that when Scott Snyder's doing what he's doing? And Christian, you choose sides. Christian Cage sent to the back by Rudy Charles, the senior official. Hey, he's got to do the same thing for Snyder. Great way! That's what you got to do! you got to make it fair on the way around! And Snyder can't believe him, but let's face it, both of you need to be out of here! Let the two guys settle on their own! Look at the emotion on the face of the senior official. Rudy Charles is laying down the law to Scott Snyder! He wants this thing settled. This is the crowd to send off Scott Snyder, and he can't believe it! to settle it between champion and challenger. Now it's Sting and Jarrett for the gold, and here we go. Wow, nice drop kick, but Jeff Jarrett looked like he was able to pull he out did. of the way. He never made contact time. with the move. Jarrett hooked the top rope, and Sting's drop kick didn't connect. He's gonna try and beat him with this, his own move here. He's gonna try and beat him with the scorpion. And he's got it in place, and you gotta wonder about the pain going through the leg of Sting. And Jeff Jarrett now has it. 
You're right, the previously injured knee of Sting being worn down by the Scorpion submission hold. Jeff Jarrett is trying to beat Sting with his own submission move. Oh, and he's just holding on right there, and then Sting able to push him out. And look at Sting getting himself fired up, and now he puts it in, and it's like you're not going to do it. You're not going to beat me with my arm. Here it is. He's got it. He's got it. In. Is Jarrett going to tap? Is Jarrett going to tap? Listen to this crowd. They can feel it. They can feel it. Pull him back, pull him back into the middle of the ring, Sting. Don't let him get the rope break. He doesn't have the leg strength, I think, to keep him there in the middle. Is Jeff Jarrett able to use that and get to the rope? You're right, that's got to be the difference maker. It has to be. That Scott Steiner chair shot from earlier enables Jarrett to get the rope break. Stinger splash, oh no! Rudy Charles got splashed in the corner, low blow. Low blow by Jarrett. Oh, Jeff Jarrett able to do that. Now he sets him up for the stroke and he hits it. And you can see that left leg buckle on Sting when he went down and the referee's out. Steiner's coming back. Steiner just went by us. Oh, you realize he wasn't going to stay gone for long. No. Steiner brings the guitar in for Jarrett. Sting, he just got stroked by the champ. And now Jarrett's going to go to the top with the guitar. Jeff Jarrett getting up there. He wants to put a finality on this right here. And wait a minute. Christian Cage isn't going to allow it. And he comes in with Sting's back and takes a shot at both of them. Baseball bat shot, there's one for Steiner. Look out, over the top, there you go. Down goes Steiner to the floor. And then he goes right after Jarrett, and he's gonna set him up right there for Sting. Here it is. Sting has Jarrett. Christian's got the guitar. Back drop suplex by Sting on Jarrett. What's this? Christian Cage directing traffic. He tells Sting to go to the top. High risk Sting off the top. He's, get him, get him. He's setting him up right here. Here he goes. What? What? What did he just do? What did he just do? What the hell just happened? He just smashed Sting coming off that rope. He set him up and then leveled it with Garrett's guitar. Christian Cage just delivered the knockout blow. Christian Cage took Jarrett's guitar and crashed it right over the head of Sting. Both of the guys are laid out, but Jeff Jarrett rips no, over Sting no, away. No, it can't end like this. Oh, Christian oh, no. Cage, that was filthy. Referee Rudy Charles back in. Look no. at that grin in. on his face. One. No. Two. No. No. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the match is still NWA World Heavyweight Champion, the King of the Mountain, Jim Jarrett. Christian Cage, you're a, you're a selfish SOB. He's a snake. He's a filthy rotten snake. Christian Cage just knocked out Sting. Sting just got screwed! Sting just got screwed! Sting just got screwed out of the NWA world title! I can't believe what I just saw!